This one's a little different. An international mystery involving scandal, a secret video, and a sting operation. So big that it ousted two leading politicians and overturned the government. The scandalous recording known as the Honey Trap video was taken in a luxury villa in Ibiza in the summer of 2017. The guests, Austrian politicians, Heinz Christian Strach and parliamentary group leader Johan Grudenis, the Honey, Alana Markarova, the so-called niece of a wealthy Russian oligarch. Not only was she a beautiful trap, but she proposed support for the far-right Freedom Party in exchange for under-the-table deals. The problem, the wealthy Russian oligarch does not have a niece. With hidden microphones and cameras installed into the villa's mobile phone charging station and light switches, the dealings were caught on film and published in two German newspapers. Over the course of seven hours, the leaders became more and more entrenched in the trap. And the mystery remains, who was behind the entire operation? Neither of the newspapers that published the footage have revealed their source. Whoever the operative, their trap seems to have served its purpose. Strach was forced to resign as vice chancellor. Even today, the motive and identities of those who orchestrated the sting are unknown. Here's a video that is either 100% fake or 100% terrifying. A family from the Philippines is going for a joy ride when they spot a pedestrian ahead of them who is scary enough to make them bust out the cameras and start recording. <laughs> The obvious answer is that this person could have just pulled their shirt over their head as a prank, but look a little closer and you can see that there is a pair of fully developed shoulders that lead up to the neckline, right where the head should be. You can even see sweat stains where the shoulder blades are. Also, more importantly, how would they be able to walk so smoothly like that with a shirt covering both of their eyes? This person definitely has a strong sense of direction. I can't tell if this video is real or not, but a local myth in the Philippines would suggest it is actually real. Apparently, when you live in the Philippines and you see a person who is missing their head, it is a symbol that means they are going to pass away soon. Therefore, a lot of people think that this video is proof that the legend is real. Two girls are sharing a meal while their mother lovingly watches. It looks like a nice family moment until the girl closest to the camera notices something in the other room and lets out a frightened whimper. I just turned off the lights, that's all. Nobody else sees it, and they continue eating. Her sister tries to cheer the worried girl up, but she sees something again and starts to cry out of fear. Her mother asks her what's wrong, and all the girl can do is point to the other room. She stands up, no longer able to be near whatever it is that she sees, and then she runs to her mom for protection. Her sister is laughing hysterically at all of this, but then she turns around and sees it for herself. Turn around, turn around, but you gotta listen to me. Turn around, look at me. What's in that? <laughs> the video ends shortly afterwards, but that's not all. Some YouTubers say that they can see the outline of a figure peering around the corner just moments before the video cuts out. It's supposed to appear on the right hand side of the doorway. Let me know if you see anything. This woman claims that she would go to bed at night only to be woken up by strange noises and left with the unshakable feeling that she was not alone. When she sets up a camera to record some evidence, she finds this bizarre footage the next day. Imagine watching yourself trying to sleep while this figure haunts your dreams. At one point, the supposed phantom appears to be lunging at her. She says that she believes she was still awake during this point and remembers seeing nothing. Only when the contrast on the video was enhanced did anything become visible. On November 21st, 2016, a giant fireball shot over Port Charlotte, Florida. 
and landed in an undisclosed location. This event was caught on multiple dash cams. As the footage shows, the huge streak of light hits the earth at a high rate of speed and fills a large portion of the sky with a metallic blue color. There has been no official explanation, but everything from a radiation laced meteorite to a failed EMP has been proposed. What I find strangest of all is that no damage was reported. Look at the footage closely. Most people agree that this was a meteorite. But what do you think this was? It's Friday the 13th, and unlike most of the other videos on this list, Chris and Jeff actually believe in Bloody Mary. They are prepared to run for their lives the moment they see any trouble. Jeff stands outside of the room with a flashlight, while Chris goes inside to summon Mary by himself. Okay. Oh man, that's kind of creepy. No. Come on, man. You gotta be, can you please be in here? No. Please. No. Chris hesitates for a long time before finally uttering her name three times. Nothing happens, that is, until he turns around to leave. That's when Jeff sees something. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm serious. I seen something. Did you get that on camera? I don't know. <laughs> you freaking scared there the shit out of me. there. Jeff says that she was tall and reaching out for him. Some YouTubers say if you slow down a portion of the video, you can see a person facing the wall with their back to the camera. Let me know if you see anything. Yes. A man in St. Louis, Missouri, suspects that he's captured a sign from above at the St. Peter and Paul graveyard. Or maybe it's a sign from down below, the twisted, gnarled tree in this video has been struck by lightning, and now it has a flaming and smoking center that looks like the gates to the underworld. Could this be a warning of an ominous future event, or just a simple act of nature? This video was uploaded by a YouTuber named The Guitar Family, and it captures a strange moment during one of CNN's news broadcasts. A typical news segment looks to be going exactly as planned, but then a very strange technical malfunction occurs. Pay close attention to the face of the man on the right. Hi Anderson, well there hasn't been any, any statements or anything from the Assad regime, however they have reacted there. I generally don't pay much attention to these types of videos because, honestly, I usually can't even tell what they're trying to point out. But in this video, something strange clearly happens with the news anchor's eyes. They look like they change into some unnatural color and then go back to normal. Some people say the fluorescent light is reflecting off of his contact lenses, but others aren't so sure. It sounds like a good explanation to me, but then again, with all of the conspiracy theories that have turned out to be true in the past, I honestly can't say for sure. In this quick clip, a group of kids are playing soccer when a strange and mysterious creature decides to crash their game. Watch closely as a black object approaches them from the right. Let's go, we got schedule! No, we got schedule! Go on there! Go! Get the fucking side! The poor quality of this video makes it hard to tell exactly what this creature is. It's very small and the way it shuffles side to side does not look natural at all. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to make out a face or even any limbs. It could be a wild animal, but the way that the children and even the dog all run away in absolute horror has many people convinced that this creature could be paranormal or even extraterrestrial. Even when you slow down the video and zoom in on the creature, it's hard to tell what it could be. I personally have no idea what it is, and I definitely like to read your best guess in the comments below. This video was recorded more than five years ago. It shows the pointer moving around the Ouija board on its own at first, but then it somehow levitates and begins flying away. There's a good chance that this is CGI, at least. That's the only explanation that I can think of besides actual spirits. Residents in Tallahassee, Florida, feared for their lives when this strange and haunting sound echoed throughout their area for over 20 minutes. It's not back that way, it's up in this corner. Don't go out there. There's little doubt that this video is real, as you can hear the fear in the family's voices. I get the kids in the bathroom. I hear the wind. I get the kids in the bathroom. Kids in the bathroom. Kids. 
I thought it was a tornado, but the person in the video doesn't. They called 911 and learned that police were apparently flooded with concerned complaints about the noise. The person who recorded this footage says that the local news was told to report this as an airplane. This doesn't really sound like an airplane to me. There's one other strange occurrence, a sudden flash of lightning that instantly makes the noise disappear. I've never been in a tornado before, so I can't say if this video looks normal or not. I'm especially looking for opinions from people who have been in one. Do you agree with the uploader that this could have been something more than a tornado? Like a government weather experiment? An older brother is trying to show his younger sibling that Bloody Mary is not real. Now the two of them are alone in the bathroom to test this theory out. They say her name three times in the dark, and when they turn the lights back on, they mistakenly think they are safe. Open, look, look. See? Yeah. It's all over. It's, see, that's not gonna happen. These books appear to be flying off the shelf all by themselves at an Alamo gift shop after hours. It's hard to tell if they were truly pulled out by a ghost or if someone was just pushing them from the other side of the shelf and playing a prank. We'll never know for sure, but if this were to happen anywhere in Texas, then a historical site like the Alamo would be a very likely location. A YouTuber named DX5K doesn't really believe in Bloody Mary, but at the same time, he just can't seem to stop trying to summon her. This is his third try, and it seems to be going as poorly as the other two attempts. He gets an idea and decides that he should try to summon her in total darkness, and that's when things start to get interesting in a potentially paranormal way. Maybe without the candle. Wow, I tried to blow the candle out and it came back on. Let's try it again. Wow, that's actually spooky. I can't blow the candle out. Now, this is getting interesting. This is what I like. Let's go. The candle continues to stay lit, despite blowing straight on it. You can hear the curiosity in his voice as DX5K starts to consider the possibility that he may not be alone after all. He quickly shakes the thought out of his mind and tries to blow out the candles for a third time. Now, say something. I blew your candle out. I seen you kept trying to put the candle back up. It's lit. This time, the candle goes out and he resumes talking trash to Bloody Mary. This could be proof that the legend is not real, or maybe Bloody Mary does not show up for non-believers. If it's not real, then I'd like to know why he couldn't blow out the candle. It doesn't really sound like he is acting. It's a dreary and overcast day when a YouTuber named Sharby straps a GoPro on his head and heads into an abandoned graveyard with his friends. This eerie graveyard is surrounded by woods and is in the middle of nowhere, as Sharby puts it, and they are hoping to find some adventure. They are checking out old headstones and goofing off when a frightening discovery suddenly changes the mood. What? Is that a knife, dude? It appears to be a rusty old crowbar that was perhaps used to dig up graves. Both Sharby and his friend instantly get a bad feeling, and Sharby throws it to the ground, suddenly wanting nothing to do with the ancient object. They keep exploring and eventually come across a grave from 1811. The unshakable feeling of dread just won't go away, and suddenly it begins to snow, which is very odd weather for October. Not too far away, they discovered a battered doll and get seriously freaked out by its mere presence. Okay, yo, let's get the f out of here, man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, okay, that's it.
Some branches snap in the nearby woods and they quickly flee before they can find out what was near them. This footage was taken after hours by a staff member on a college campus in North Yorkshire. It was shot through a classroom window and shows the outline of a person attentively studying at a computer, seemingly without knowing that they were being filmed. The only problem is that no one else should have been in the building at the time. The video could be CGI, or it could be the actual weightless black mass of a real ghost. Tim and two of his friends are going to explore a house that is like legendarily haunted. According to local lore, this is a place where devil-worshipping members used to perform rituals, and the surrounding area has never been the same since. Beyond this information, all they know is that its general location is somewhere deep in the woods. They follow a trail and eventually come across a large abandoned house in the middle of the night. The three of them all get a strange feeling and instantly know that they are in the right spot. The door is open and they bravely march inside. Beyond a room filled with strange scrawlings, they find a dark room that stinks like something rotting. Dolls are hanging by their necks. Just when they are about to leave, they suddenly are approached by something that comes up from behind. Jesus. A strange and unsettling gurgling noise follows them as they run out of the house and into the open night air. Whether this was scripted or legitimate is anyone's guess, only they know for sure, but even still, they may be too shaken to talk about it. This footage was taken in 1997, a year filled with strange sightings of a mysterious beast lurking deep in the woods of Emerson, Missouri. One day, a wildlife warden finds a camera ominously laying in the middle of a nature trail. He checks the footage and is stunned by what he finds. The footage was apparently taken by a pair of hunters. The two of them are walking through the woods when an evil-looking transparent figure suddenly approaches. You see that? Over there, look, 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 over there. You see that? What the hell? Wait, 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 that, because that was it again, right there, right there. The see-through creature looks small and menacing as it glides across the forest floor without so much as a sound. They lose track of the creature for a bit and then find it again. This time, the camera zooms in for a better look. Wait, 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 wait. I don't like this. You see that? Right there. Look, 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 look. Oh my god. That's not an animal. I don't like it. Okay, 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 okay fuck. Go, 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 go. The unidentifiable creature sees them and squats down in a low and aggressive posture. It lets out an inhuman shriek that sounds both high-pitched and deep at the same time. The men run deeper into the woods, terrified out of their minds as the thing presumably tracks them like prey. What happens from there is unknown. Hopefully, they make it out of the woods alive, but in the decades since, no one has ever come forward to claim the video as their own. This footage was taken when a team of curious German explorers traveled deep into Africa to talk with a powerful shaman who claimed to have many spiritual gifts. When they asked him to demonstrate what he was capable of to their cameras and to the world at large, the shaman whose name was Ovaku, decided to dazzle them with this maneuver. The tribe chants a mysterious song of celebration and encouragement as Ovaku hangs suspended in mid-air. This incredible act looks like it's taking a lot of physical strength as well as mental concentration to perform. The shaman is gasping for breath and appears to be struggling hard to stay afloat. When he drops to the ground, he is exhausted and looks like he is about to pass out on the spot. Determining whether this footage is real or not depends on how much you are willing to trust the German explorers. They insist that no lifts or pulleys were used and they do seem genuinely amazed while filming but who knows what they were really thinking for sure. I will admit that there doesn't seem to be any strings attached to them during the close-up shots, so maybe the shaman can really levitate after all. Here's another video from the mysterious Menger Hotel. A woman is bored and giving a brief tour of her room when suddenly a paranormal presence makes itself known. Hello? 
Mike? She waits for a tense moment, hoping that her boyfriend Mike is playing a prank nearby. When nobody answers her, she bravely opens the door and looks into the other room. Here's what she finds. What? Nuh uh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Something has dumped all of her possessions onto the floor in a quick fit of rage. While it's possible that she could have done this herself, it's also quite possible that this really was a paranormal encounter, especially when you consider that fires, missing things, and other strange happenings have become the norm over the years at this hotel, which was also built over the famous Alamo battle site. Are you gonna turn it off? I see it getting very dim. Are you playing with the flashlight now? Wait. Can someone explain how this is happening? If it's not being caused by the paranormal, you can't see the bottom of the flashlight in the second video, so maybe their hand is still on it, but nobody is touching the flashlight in the first video, so that one looks especially real. And if you've ever tried this at Dry Creek Graveyard, then we would definitely like to read what happened to you next. So please let us know in the comments section. Museum maintenance workers in Manchester, England were very surprised when this ancient Egyptian statue began moving by itself. It would always shift in its display case when they aren't looking, and when they put it back in its spot, it would just move again on its own later. After determining that this was not some kind of prank, the museum workers became extremely curious and set up a camera. They were stunned to find the 4,000-year-old statue gradually moving in a perfect circle completely by itself on camera. Scientists studied this video extensively and eventually concluded that vibrations from foot traffic in nearby buses were causing the small figurine to shift in place. However, museum workers note that this figure has been part of their collection for 80 years and it has never moved before, so this reason is not exactly foolproof. Also, none of the other museum artifacts have ever displayed this kind of behavior, which has led many YouTubers to believe that this explanation is merely a cover-up for the paranormal truth and possibly a dangerous curse. This tape is probably one of the most morbid things I've ever seen. A deranged teen casually explains how to dig up graves and extract what's inside both as a hobby and for profit, and the amount of detail he puts into his explanations make me think that this is undoubtedly real. You'll have to watch the video for yourself to get all of the sickening facts. But basically, he says that he digs them up and sells them to local magic shops for a profit. He then goes on to explain how to detach the top from the body, and how to do things like invert it into a candle holder to make more money. He says that he can tell how old it is by the color, and he even talks about how to remove the brain. He says all of this while supposedly handling one that he took as an example. The more he talks, the more I hope that he is just holding a prop and making all of this up. During this part of the video, however, you can see a hole where it fits into the spinal cord, which makes me think that he is not lying after all. Okay, pull it back like that. It should loosen up from the um, spinal cord so that way you don't mess up this part and everything ripping it off, okay? Pull it back, okay? You'll also notice around the five and a half minute mark of the video that he has deep marks on his hands. It looks to me as if he really has been digging up what he says he is. There's little doubt in my mind that this video was really taken in the 90s. You can even see a copy of Evil Dead 2 next to him and the VHS box looks new. So the question is, is this video real? Or was this just a group of friends who were just joking around? Well, one part of this video in particular makes me think that he is being absolutely serious. Um, make sure there's no witnesses when you leave. Always bring them back. If you leave witnesses, sometimes you might, you might like doing these things and everything at the wall. Somebody might see them and say, that was him. That was him. That was him. Never play anybody point you out. He has never been caught or even identified. 
Avery is almost two years old. He's happily babbling away in the kitchen when his mother starts to feel a strange presence. This has happened a few times before, so she decides to start recording. Normally, her child is very quiet, but every once in a while, he will become very active and start having a conversation with someone who neither of his parents could see. Who are you talking to? Avery's mother finds this behavior very perplexing, so she starts to ask him over and over who he is talking to. Finally, after the third or fourth time, she gets a sinister reply. Who are you talking to? Her child looks over his shoulder, almost as if someone is there. When he turns his back to her, a raspy voice says, Ryan. Listen again with the sound up if you don't hear it. I guess this voice could be coming from Avery, but it sounds like it's coming from someplace much closer, almost right next to the camera. It almost sounds like a slightly different voice than Avery's. Maybe Ryan is a ghostly pal who is looking to make a new friend. A YouTuber named Leviathan is on a hiking trip when he hears strange noises in the distance. Just when he seriously suspects that he's not alone in the woods, a series of large footprints confirms his suspicions. He now fears for his safety and has already decided to leave when he hears the same noises again, much closer now than before. The predatory call encourages him to make a quick retreat back to civilization. Leviathan still has no idea what was making this noise or exactly how large it was. Two friends think they may have recorded the presence of a spirit when they entered a graveyard late at night. Here's their evidence. Look at the back row of tombstones on the right and focus on the one that's closest to the road. I want to see what's in front of We'll turn my show off. An intense source of light plays over the gravestone. It could be a reflection of their headlights bouncing off some glass, but something seems a little off about the angle. And if this gravestone was not made of glass, then there is absolutely no explanation for this video. Let me know if you think this is real, or if they got fooled by their own car. Oh, I see what's in front. Turn Julie Copper is the owner of the Dawn War Memorial Bar in Stockton, London. She gets many visitors every year, but there is one ghostly patron in particular that she will never forget. She even has video evidence to back up her mysterious story. One night, a bar band was practicing in the upstairs area. They take a short break and all of the lights suddenly go out. Moments before the power surge, you can see something strange dart across the three of the CCTV monitors. It's a shadowy black figure that Julie claims to have seen plenty of times before, and it's not the only paranormal encounter that she's witnessed while working at the bar. The upstairs of the bar has a very pleasant feeling according to her, but it's the downstairs that feels somewhat off and evil. Julie refuses to go down there by herself ever since she heard someone playing a game of pool and thought it was the maintenance. When she called out his name, however, she found no one was there. This footage comes from a hotel camera in New York that's near Niagara Falls. Shane Sovar is a hotel manager who claims to have seen a large triangular UFO shoot past by his window one night. An on-duty hotel security officer backs up this claim and says that he saw it too. They contact an amateur UFO group called the Aerial Phenomenon Investigation team who does a standard investigation and leaves. Things get very odd soon after. Around two weeks after the aerial phenomenon was finished their investigation, a pair of men dressed in all black suits reportedly entered the hotel and began to interrogate witnesses for more information. They specifically wanted to know where Shane and the hotel security guard could be found. Shane said that people who had spoken with the men later told him how strange they looked. They were tall, pale, had no eyebrows or eyelashes, and basically looked exactly 
exactly the same. They had especially large and unsettling eyes, and one woman told Shane that she felt like they were able to read her mind. Whether these two men were simply businessmen on vacation or actual government agents is anyone's guess, but Shane swears that he is telling the truth, exactly what the team of UFO investigators had found during their investigation, along with whatever these men were looking for, has never been released to the public. According to a team of ghost hunters, this house in San Pedro, California has long been haunted by poltergeists who like to open cupboards, throw plates, change television channels, and linger in certain rooms until a mother and her two children felt uncomfortable enough to leave. A lot of events happened before the ghost hunters became involved and therefore were never recorded, but it wasn't uncommon for red liquid to drip from the walls of this haunted home for no explainable reason. Here is a quick clip of this happening in real time before the team's very eyes. Everyone just left except us. Things are starting to drip out of the cabinets. Nobody believes us, but it's happening. There it is. There it is, right there. Unbelievable. Eventually, the ghosts drive the mother and her children out of the home, and the ghost hunters volunteer to stay there and investigate for several months. One day, they hear three loud snapping noises coming from the attic and send a man named Barry to investigate. As he later recalls, something was up there waiting for them. Are you okay, buddy? Oh, look at his neck. Oh, 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 what's behind your neck? I don't know. What's on my neck? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Barry comes back down distraught and confused, now missing his glasses. Some kind of cord is wrapped around his neck, and he insists that something had tried to choke him upstairs in the attic. The investigation was called off not long after, out of a concern for the team's personal safety. Two friends look out the window and see a mysterious figure dressed in all white, roaming the graveyard without shoes. She has her head down and pays absolutely no attention to them, even as they call out to her. Hey, what you doing, girl? Yo, that is creepy you as. Know, what the? F what happened? What the f is she doing? Why is she touching other people's graves? Finally, she starts to walk towards them, and they quiet down. One of the friends quickly points out that now she knows where they live. He screams out the window that she's scaring him and she walks away, still completely lost in her own world. Here's where things get even more weird. She heads to the back of the graveyard, spins around a few times, and then disappears behind a tall gravestone. I'm holding this camera until she come out from behind that tombstone. Yo, she's not coming back. She's gone, where the did she go? We watched her walk behind the tombstone and she's gone. They think that she has vanished, but I think she could have just been sitting down on the other side. The two friends say that they kept filming for a long time and never saw her again, so maybe she really did disappear. Still, it's hard to tell if this was a genuine spirit or just someone with a morbid attraction to graveyards. That's what this YouTuber thinks about Bloody Mary after making this video. He says her name way more than three times and then begins to taunt her out loud. Are you real Bloody Mary? Are you just a Joke. Did y'all just hear that? Still not convinced, the brave teen says her name some more and waits. It isn't long before he gets his reply. You do that. What's going on here? Drawers are opening on their own, the faucet turns on, and he soon concludes that Bloody Mary is very real after all. He goes to grab the door and finds that it won't budge. He puts his hands on top of his head now, obviously distressed, just when he is sure that he's a goner. He manages to open the door and make an escape. This footage was reportedly taken on a flight somewhere over Zambia. A person is casually recording out their window when a giant humanoid creature starts to materialize in the distance. The creature seems to keep pace and ride alongside them for a moment before disengaging and twisting away.
The obvious answer to this is CGI. If it's not CGI, however, then what this creature could be is anyone's guess. In 2009, a strange phenomenon rocked the residents of Norway just before sunrise. Many Norwegians were surprised to find a glowing beam of light just beyond the white cap mountain ranges. Suddenly, the beam exploded into a huge hypnotizing spiral of white light that was hundreds of miles long. No one quite understood what they were watching as they all vacantly stared into the bright white vortex totally mesmerized. Then, without a sound, the vortex shifted into a black hole and disappeared as quickly as it came. To this day, no real plausible explanation exists for why a huge vortex opened up over Norway. It was so big that people saw it as far away as Sweden. Some people even insist that it was a government weather experiment or else a real life portal that probably went to some place you'd never want to visit. A man is walking around the infamous Alcatraz when he picks up two possible paranormal encounters. I'll start with the weirdest one first. He is inspecting a roll of holding cells when a loud voice seems to call out to him with a single question. It sounds to me as if the deep voice is asking one simple word, why? The second possible encounter occurs as he is entering another part of the prison. Listen to this strange and haunting laugh. This one has a fairly reasonable explanation. Alcatraz is on an island, so maybe this was a bird call echoing off the prison's walls. I can't tell for sure, so let me know what you think about these two events. This tunnel in Blue Ash, Ohio is steeped in local lore, and none of it is good. Apparently, a cult once used this maze of sewer passages to hold all sorts of rituals and sacrifices. This makes a YouTuber named The Fam want to explore the area with his friends, though now I'm sure he wishes he hadn't. Everything starts out fine at first, but soon The Fam claims to feel more and more sick as he draws closer to the infamous altar room, which is where most of the sacrifices were supposedly made. Something makes him have a panic attack and he claims to have felt ill for a long time after making this video. It's impossible to tell if he really is being affected by spirits, or if he simply contracts a sickness from being in the sewer, or if it's his nerves getting the better of him. I'll let you decide for yourself. Here's a clip of him at the beginning of the video. Alright guys, I'm gonna keep on going. I gotta see if we can find this altar room. I'm not looking forward to finding it really. Feeling normal. And here is his reaction after discovering the sacrificial altar room. I'm having a panic attack. You're having a panic attack? <coughs> I did a couple minutes ago. Do you think he really is getting sick from being in the presence of pure evil? This video comes from a YouTuber named Kusun2. He's a college student with an original Xbox that has a very strange and unexplainable problem. Every time he is hanging out by himself, his console likes to turn itself on. This happens so often that Kusun2 decides to record it for evidence. The only problem is that this Xbox appears to be camera shy. He'll stare and stare at it and it won't do a thing. It only seems to turn on when he is doing something else, almost as if it's trying to distract him. Even now as he films his Xbox and explains his story, it refuses to turn on by itself and makes him look like a fool. After talking for about 5 minutes, Kusun2 finally decides to test his theory and leaves the room. The Xbox does nothing for a long time, but then... Keep in mind that there's no way to turn on an original Xbox remotely, and he always keeps his controller neatly wrapped up on the top of the system, so he can't be using a controller that's out of sight. On top of that, things have been regularly disappearing and reappearing on their own, 
and now Kusan too is extremely creeped out about being alone. A man claims that he keeps experiencing paranormal activity in his dining room and nowhere else. He feels unsafe and decides to leave a camera running in the dining room to see what goes on when he's not around. Nothing happens for a while, but then something comes along in the window that looks questionable. This is the zoomed in version. A tiny face appears to peek out at them from the glass panel on the bottom right before darting out of sight. You can't really make out any of its features, but notice how some orbs float by shortly before this happens. It's hard to tell if it's a paranormal creature or just a small animal, but I wouldn't want to be left alone in the house to find out. Three friends bravely choose to summon Bloody Mary while one of their parents records. They recite her name three times in the mirror, and when nothing happens, they decide that the legend is a bust. The dad makes fun of them for a little bit, and they go on with their day. I guess now we know that Mary Worth um, doesn't like you. According to them, it wasn't until much later that they actually looked at the video and noticed some strange occurrences that made them upload it onto YouTube. Look at the countertop in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, please. Come on now. Um, well, other ideas? I don't know, other ideas of, of how to get her to jump maybe, out of the mirror at us? Maybe it takes a little longer. Like how long? I don't know. And like a couple of The candle appears to move by itself on at least two separate occasions. I guess it could have been magnets, but I really don't understand how. It's important to add that they were all picking the candles up to light them just a moment earlier, and nothing was hidden underneath. Give me your best guess as to how they moved these candles. Or better yet, tell me if you think it was Bloody Mary who was moving them. This footage comes from India, where a woman is seen cleaning up at a sink. Suddenly, a dark figure appears behind her and gives her a hard shove from behind. She turns around only to find the room empty and hurries away. This dash cam footage was taken from the Garland City Police Department. A police officer is chasing a car at high speeds when things suddenly go off-road. The car has turned into a dead end and is coming up on a chain link fence. It looks like the chase is over, but then this happens. A fence at the end means no way out, or does it? The car appears to have escaped through a solid chain link fence with no gate or any other type of opening to pass through. Every officer who has reviewed this footage has been completely baffled and no explanation has ever been given. You can tell by the angle of the car's brake lights that it was driving straight the whole time and did not swerve around the fence. Somehow there's no signs of damage to the fence. It looks completely untouched. A group of British ghost hunters are walking around the Wilney graveyard in search of paranormal evidence. It's late at night when they apparently find exactly what they are looking for. Pay close attention to the area between the two tombstones or you might miss it. What the f*** was that? The man's flashlight passes over a tall silhouette that makes him pause. It looks like it could have simply been some shadows playing against the wall, but they light up the entire area and there's no wall to be found. Let me know if you saw the strange shadowy figure and what you think it could have been. A YouTuber named Nugget Noggin is exploring an old abandoned home one evening somewhere in the deep south. He's been here only once before, and it gave him such a strange and foreboding feeling that he couldn't take it anymore and he had to leave. Now he's mustered up enough courage to come back and check out the rest of the house. He wants to get up to the second floor. All right, I got this little door here to keep the air from rising up. All right, I don't know. Could be somebody up here. Oh man, somebody's standing on it. 
Faster can't lift it up. Much to his dismay, he finds a door has been laid over the top of the stairway so that nobody can get through. He tries to push on the horizontal door. One moment, it feels as if a heavy force is standing on top of it, and the next moment, the weight is suddenly gone, and Nugget Noggin can get upstairs. Some rooms give him the same weird feeling that made him flee before. He remembers that the front door was kicked in. Possibly someone broke in. Maybe a family was living here long Long ago and things did not end well for them won't be able to sleep look there's a light on in there it's odd there's a mirror you know what time it is Nugget Noggin doesn't find much else and leaves. When he's reviewing the footage, however, he does notice what could be the face of a small girl. Take a look at this picture and tell me if it looks like anything paranormal to you. After multiple nights of getting no sleep and experiencing a deep sense of dread, this person sets up multiple cameras to record exactly what happens to them at night. When they check out the cameras the next day, they find this strange encounter. A faint shadow appears to linger above them for a moment before fading away. It has an unnatural shape and almost seems to reach out at them. This video could be fake because this person was sleeping with their lights on, which is strange. But then again, maybe they were just trying to make sure there was plenty of light to catch the ghost on video. Some people have even suggested that this person was having an out-of-body experience during REM sleep. The Driskill Hotel is one of the most legendarily haunted hotels in all of Texas. This is where you'll find a painting of a senator's four-year-old daughter named Samantha, who supposedly fell down a flight of steps at the hotel and met her end. Her soul is said to reside in the painting now, and she will change facial expressions if you look at her for long enough. Just look at what happens when this YouTuber named Emily takes a glance at the painting. Mom, oh, her face does change. Has it changed? Yes, it just changed when I started looking at it. Jacob, did it change? After freaking out for a bit, Emily bravely walks back up to the picture and takes another look. Try to examine the picture when the camera zooms in on it and tell me if you see Samantha's eyes move. I personally do not see it, but maybe I'm missing something. Her eyes are moving. Oh my god. Her eyes just moved up. I'm not lying. If you want to find out what else this painting can supposedly do, then be sure to check out my other video called 7 Haunted Paintings. What you are watching is not a fireworks show, but rather a rare and mysterious natural phenomenon known as Nega Fireballs. These strange fireballs literally shoot up from the water every year and can be tiny as sparks or large as a basketball. You can see them from Thailand and Laos. Scientists have no idea what causes these fireballs, but some locals believe that this is a display of power from a serpent-like bodyguard who once watched over Buddha. A man is filming his local graveyard one calm day when he catches what could be a glimpse of the other side. He zooms in on the strange spot and finds no further traces of the paranormal. I don't know about you, but I can almost make out the head and shoulders of a small child when he slows the video down. The Menger Hotel in San Antonio, Texas claims to be one of the most haunted areas in the entire state, and there are plenty of videos to back up this statement. One of these videos involves a brother and sister who both suddenly get a strange feeling from the building and decide to start recording. They are exploring a very small and cramped area of the hotel. As they are discussing the possibilities out loud, the woman suddenly announces that she is extremely uncomfortable. You can't see it very well at first, but soon the camera zooms in and reveals three deep scratches along the woman's bare shoulder. They look fresh and sting badly. She says that she was simply sitting on the steps for just one moment and the jagged marks appeared as soon as she stood up. Judging from this video, 
It looks as though she may have been literally cut by an angry ghost. Recent footage from China apparently shows two identical sons orbiting next to each other. This footage has been credited as authentic, and even the world's top scientists have been unable to agree on an official explanation. This only lasted for a short while, before the sun apparently went back to normal. One scientist suggests that it could have been an optical illusion caused by light reflecting off a thick path of atmosphere. I think this is a reasonable explanation since, if there were suddenly two suns, then the increase in temperature probably would have fried us all. Unless, of course, there have always been two suns all along. According to the legend, there are many different ways to summon Bloody Mary, which means that the method you choose could change what happens to you. The person in this video uses a slightly different method that I've never seen before. Instead of spinning around three times and then saying Bloody Mary, she says Bloody Mary once after each spin. This is the end result. Her face becomes smeared, and she quickly darts out of the room. If this video is real, then it appears that Bloody Mary somehow removed all of her facial features. Perhaps as a warning, a YouTuber named Trey P is wandering around an empty graveyard somewhere in New Orleans, all by himself, when he hears this voice out of nowhere. <laughs> He claims that the voice belongs to a ghost, though to be honest, it might just be his. The only way to tell if this video is real would be to have Trey P say a sentence and then compare his voice with the voice in the video. This alleged ghost was caught on video rummaging around a property of an arcade in Dallas. The phantom blob glides over the grass and quickly fits through an entranceway. It's pretty convincing to me. Here's a second video of it. This looks like a cheaper camera, but it picks up the same shape. The only possible explanation I have besides the paranormal is maybe an insect is crawling across the lens. A child is left alone for just a moment, but still long enough for her to have a possible conversation with a ghost. Look across from her at the wrapped silverware in front of the glass and watch what it does as she speaks. The silverware moves all by itself shortly after she reminds an invisible person that this is not their dinner. She could be talking to an imaginary friend, but that doesn't explain how the object moved without being touched. The ghost appears to leave her alone after this brief interaction, and she happily resumes eating as if nothing happened. Exactly what it was planning to do to their food could be anyone's guess. A YouTuber named Junked Up Kitten and his friends are exploring an old county jail. They take a video camera with them so that they can make a parody of the Ghost Hunters television series. Little did the small group know that on this night they would accidentally capture actual evidence of real ghosts. Junked Up Kitten wanders around the property with the camera close to his face while narrating. He passes by an ordinary looking jail cell window and doesn't think much of it at the time. When he goes back to review the footage later, he makes a startling discovery in the window. It looks like his parody show has turned out to be the real thing. From the other side of the glass, the colorless reflection of a man's face stares at him. You can clearly see the outline of the ghost's brow, nose, and empty eyes. His head is cocked to the right, almost as if he is sizing up a newcomer. His mouth appears to be a thin, expressionless line. If anything, the ghost has incredible timing. Right when Junked Up Kitten says that he is looking for evidence of ghosts, one just happens to show up in the window. It's almost as if the ghost was trying to make its presence known. Perhaps it was even trying to get a hold of someone who could free it from its miserable cell. Anthony Choi is a UFO investigator who has been looking for UFO activity in Peru for the last 25 years. For decades, it had seemed like the aliens were always one step ahead of him. But one summer night, while hunting for humanoids near a gas station in Pachachamac, Peru, Anthony finally captured one of them on his cell phone. <laughs> Grábalo, sí, está caminando. Grábalo. A la mierda, está donde es algo, es algo.
The blue being vaguely has a human outline. Look closely and you can make out its arms and legs as it glides across the street. It looks like it is made out of pure energy. Whatever the technology is, it comes with one special life-saving trick, teleportation. The humanoid stops in the road just as a freight truck comes barreling its way at about 70 miles per hour. It looks like the strange blue visitor is about to get flattened, but then it suddenly disappears and materializes behind the vehicle like magic. It keeps crossing the street while Anthony watches with his crew in disbelief. Me paralizó ahí. Sí. Es una persona es. No, 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 estaba es caminando. Persona, está caminando. El globo estaba caminando. Estaba caminando, esa verdad. The fact that it stops in the middle of a busy road suggests that this thing is not familiar with our highway traffic rules. Even though it is probably not from this earth, it appears to be well experienced and capable of adapting to new dangers. It continues to cross three more lanes and teleports straight through another truck with ease. Anthony and his team of investigators say that the creature was about three feet tall with red eyes and a head that was shaped like a pumpkin. As the video shows, they were too overjoyed at the thought of discovering extraterrestrial life to be afraid. It is a video that Anthony will not fear, but instead cherish forever. A wanted man in Ripley, England pulls a crazy move to avoid being captured. Completely unaware that his aerial acrobatics are also caught on camera via a newly outfitted police drone unit. He opens the window, hesitates, and then drops down onto a patio roof. It surprisingly holds his weight as he daringly runs across the fence and jumps into somebody's yard. Meanwhile, a ton of police are in pursuit. I have no idea what he did, but he must be risking a serious penalty to want to get away this bad. He outruns a police dog and at 40 seconds he jumps a fence that not even the canine unit can handle. He tries to hide in this unkept yard, but it's no use. The drone has him in its sights, and with his position detected, there's nowhere left to hide. He's quickly apprehended. A YouTuber named Yankee Reb travels to the haunted battlefield of Gettysburg, Virginia, and stands before an old battle cannon. He grows very still and records nothing but darkness for a full 20 minutes before any paranormal activity occurs. As the night progresses, a lone soldier silently marches around the cannon and stops just outside of the muzzle, which is where you would stand to reload it. Holy, holy c Down by the cannon, you see that? Oh, what is that? I say it could be a soldier because, aside from the historic location, I can also kind of make out the old style sash and hat that some soldiers used to wear. No way. What is that? I have no idea. Did you get that on the camera? I, it's recording. Oh my gosh, did you see that? His attire is most visible at around the 1 minute and 58 second mark, so that's when you can get the clearest and most direct look for yourself. Let me know if you can see what he has on. I, Did you, honestly, I, I wouldn't believe it unless we recorded it. Maybe this soldier in particular was accidentally taken out by his own cannon while reloading, which used to happen quite often back those times. This public official in Costa Rica is in the middle of a press release when a small wasp buzzes all around his face. The man is caught up with his speech and he doesn't notice it until he accidentally takes the wasp into his mouth. Los debates naturales que hay en una zona tan importante como esta, que sin embargo, me la comí. A member of the media sees the whole thing and her facial expression changes to anxiety as she puts her hand to her mouth in surprise, clearly waiting for him to scream. You can see the wasp has a tiny stinger that could deal a lot of pain to the soft tissue of the mouth or gums. I'm amazed that he didn't get stung, or if he did, he played it off well. Something has crawled up this poor woman's leg and refuses to come out. Her friend almost has it by the tail. But then at the last second, it does the unthinkable and burrows even deeper. The scared animal probably would have gone up way higher if she didn't stand up in time and let gravity force it back down. She is either trying not to scream or lose her lunch as her friend tries again, this time wrapping its tail around his index finger. He manages to extract a giant rat and quickly puts it back in its container. The rat looks used to being handled, and this is probably the only thing that kept it from trying to bite and scratch its way out. 
This footage comes from Vietnam, where all sorts of strange creatures are rumored to still roam free through the wild and unconquered forests. This stuffed humanoid in particular has been deceased for quite some time, possibly for decades, and now looks discolored and slowly falling apart. It appears to be half man, half snake. Long blonde hair grows from its human-like head, which is furry all over yet also covered in straw blonde facial hair. Two rodent-like arms stick out from its fur-covered upper body. Its face looks like a cross between a man and an ape. The nose looks like it belongs to a primate, but the gray lifeless eyes and smirking mouth look like they could belong to a person. Its scaly lower half looks exactly like a snake's. Watching this thing in action must have been a terrible and shocking sight. How such a creature could come to be is unexplainable, yet here it is. Perhaps there are even more of them out in the wild. Zaneo barely manages to turn his live stream on and say hello before something unexplainably paranormal happens behind him. The window somehow goes from being tightly shut to wide open in less than 10 seconds without a sound. If I'm not mistaken, this type of window doesn't even open from the outside, meaning that somebody had to be standing in the room to even push it open. Zaneo quickly searches his house in less than a minute and finds no one else's home, but when he crosses into the living room, the batteries in his smoke alarm go off for no reason at all. I know this part is real because this is the first time you hear the smoke alarm beep in the entire video. Okay. Oh, okay. Smoke alarm malfunction. The smoke alarm going off, combined with the window opening by itself, is enough to convince me that this is probably paranormal. Passengers on a ride at the state fair dangle helplessly high in the air, unable to do anything but wait to be let off as technicians struggle to manually gain control over each of the three spinning sections. There is not much time to act and every second is precious. The ride stopped because of an electrical malfunction, which means it can possibly start up again at any moment and smash everything to pieces. Meanwhile, everyone's restraints are being tested to the max as they hang upside down with their full weight suspended in midair. A loose screw or moving part could send them into the concrete below. The workers have to level out the seats so that they are upright before lowering the ride. I can only imagine how high everyone's anxiety levels must have been, especially the family members watching from the outside. A janitor is closing up a restaurant in San Francisco called The Chapel, which is said to be haunted by the ghost of a small girl. As soon as he is done locking the door, something tries to leave and then runs away. If she was afraid of getting locked in, why didn't she bang on the door to be let out? Also, how come she didn't say anything when all of the lights turned off? On the contrary, if this was instead a real person trying to sneak in, then she probably wouldn't immediately try to open the door because it could set off an alarm. I guess she could just be making sure the janitor really is leaving. But since this restaurant is said to be haunted by the ghost of a small girl, I believe this could be her. Most people think of houses, hospitals, or jails when they think about ghost sightings, but some of the most unsuspecting of places can turn out to be the most haunted. This footage was taken in a popular food joint during broad daylight. A shadowy ghost suddenly materializes in a subway restaurant. It starts out in the shape of a human and almost appears to be getting a table. When it gets back to its seat, the black shadow suddenly changes into a floating black blob of an orb. At this point, an employee or maybe a customer appears to see the ghost in the doorway. Whoever they are, they look stunned for a second and then quickly back away. The shadow orb pays no attention to the human as it floats up to the window and lingers there. It's almost as if it's taking a look at the outside world. The ghost starts to rise even higher and shrinks until it fully disappears back to wherever it came from. Jacob Vetter, who published this drone footage in May of 2015, claims that this, quote, crazy lady, unquote, was doing, quote, weird stuff, unquote, on his porch. In the video, you can indeed see someone on the porch. When she spots the drone above, she does as most people do on this list have done. She tries to knock the drone out of the sky. First, she uses a stick. That doesn't go over so well. Then she tries plush dice. That doesn't work either. Next, she is seen swinging what appears to be a black purse, but she doesn't throw it. Instead, she puts it on and leaves the yard, but paces back and forth waywardly on the sidewalk. It's uncertain what she's waiting for, if she's waiting for anything at all. 
Finally, she gets on her bike that's been parked on the sidewalk all along, and she takes off rather clumsily, circling around in the yard, then jutting out right into the road. What exactly is going on here? Because I have no idea at all. I will say it's certainly bizarre though, but the biggest question is, what was she doing on this guy's porch in the first place? Two friends are feeding their pet rabbits in the living room when they suddenly hear a mysterious noise coming from outside. Both of them are feeling pretty brave as they creep up the window and continue recording. As tough as they might be, neither of them are prepared for what they see next. <laughs> There's something there. crouching down there. Yeah, could you get the light? <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, there's something back there. Outside, some sort of orange four-legged humanoid is facing away from them. It's very low to the ground. Look directly under the clothesline if you can't see it. It's a strange glowing color that doesn't seem to belong in this world. Play the tape again in slow motion and you can clearly see the humanoid sprint away as soon as one of them knocks on the window to get its attention. It's clearly startled as it retreats over a fence with a speed too fast for its bulky body. The two of them rush out in the backyard for a fight, but they find that the creature is already gone. They check a nearby alley and quickly give up. Nobody was hurt. As for what the humanoid was doing, perhaps it smelled the scent of two rabbits and went in search of a fresh meal. Ghosts don't have to wait until nighttime before they can begin to haunt. As this Brazilian soccer footage shows, the crowd is happily cheering on their favorite team when suddenly a shadow ghost starts sprinting through all of them. Look closely and you'll notice how nobody tries to move out of the way. Even though a person is clearly running full speed at them, not a single person tries to pull their legs in or even bothers to look up. They are so concentrated on the game that they do not see, feel, or hear the ghost as it runs directly through the half-filled stadium in a straight line. Police arrive to find a mother of two is seeing things on the roof while holding her two children. She doesn't believe a word anyone has to say and thinks everyone is out to get her. Now it's up to them to bring everybody down safely. They climb onto the narrow ledge and there is barely enough room for a grown man to stand. She is in such an anxious, delusional state that not even a legitimate badge and uniform are enough to convince her. My analysis of this part is that she thinks that he is putting away his badge too quickly, which in her mind means it must be fake. Oh, this is your badge. There you go. Okay, really? Yeah, oh, real. No, really, let me see. Yeah, right here. See? It says police. Sergeant? Yeah. Eventually, she thinks he is real, but then she thinks his partner is an imposter. She reads his name tag out loud and freaks out. No, no, yeah. for you. Point blank? I think his name is Blaine Points or something like that, but I can't figure out what the significance is to her. Also, it sounds like she calls him a body avenger, whatever that means. At this point, she is so frantic that she might lose her balance. So the cops have to grab the kids by the arm and get into a terrifying tug of war. The poor kid has an adult pulling on each arm. The situation is probably horrifying for them. Eventually, the police win and round the children up, who sadly probably won't be seeing their mother again until well into their teenage years, if ever. Caitlin McIntyre is making a video of her grandpa that she wants to remember for the rest of her life, which actually might be shorter than she thinks. It may seem like nothing bad could ever happen to them on such a perfectly sunny day, but to their immediate right is a sharp drop straight off a cliff. They hit a point where the curved road grows very narrow, just as the sun beats down on their car at the worst possible angle, turning the entire windshield into nothing but a blinding white glare. Grandpa does his best to stay on the road, but the sun is so intense that not even his oversized sunglasses can get the glare out of his eyes. They find some brief cover under the trees, and they can see that the road is too narrow to safely turn around. You can tell he doesn't want to keep going, but it's too late now and there is no other choice. He has to go back into the blinding sunlight and keep pushing forward just a little bit more until he can make this turn. Maybe there's just, something up ahead. He only has a short distance to go before he can turn around, but he almost manages to drive completely off the cliff instead. It's starting to get a little worried. I can't even see. Where am I? <gasps> oh, my God. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Just to give you a better idea at how close they were to falling off, this is a brief glimpse of the side of the cliff. You can see he was still turning right and had to majorly correct the steering wheel to avoid tumbling below. 
Eventually, Caitlin gets out of the car and guides her grandfather to safety. You can still see that the sun is still totally in his eyes, and it's a small miracle they made it out of there alive. Two friends are fishing when they hear somebody else firing for Hunt not too far away. The two don't think much of it and let the man continue his hobby while they continue theirs. They keep casting into the water and everything is going fine for about a minute. And then the two sports collide. Holy Stop! Hey! Hey! It hit my boat! Look again and you can tell that he doesn't pick his foot up for dramatic effect. It was really that close. When you slow down the video to frame by frame, you can briefly see the round as it bounces off the deck right by his foot. If they had been drifting downriver, even just a little faster, it would have been a direct hit and a trip to the hospital for certain. These brave scientists are tracking the spread of Ebola by testing local bat colonies in the African Congo. You would think that they wouldn't want to find any traces of Ebola, but it's actually the exact opposite. They're hoping to follow the infected bats back to the source of Ebola to eradicate it once and for all. It's about 3 a.m. and they have hours of testing to do in the middle of the night before they can get any rest. They have to stay awake and alert at all times. Any one of the bats could be contaminated and all it would take is a single bite or a direct transmission of fluids to cause the next human outbreak. They hose themselves down with a special medical spray and take other precautions, but I can't help but notice they have a lot of exposed skin, particularly around the neck. If one of the bats lands on that area and sinks their teeth in, it could start another epidemic. All I know is that if I'm in the middle of an area known for Ebola, you better believe I want every square inch fully covered. This popular chain restaurant in a children's hospital is said to be haunted, and I need your help to tell if this is real or not. A small transparent girl runs by, but something is a little off about the video, and it looks like it might be photoshopped. If any video editing experts can tell me if this ghost sighting is fake or real, I could definitely use your help. A drone is deployed by the Randolph County Sheriff's Department in North Carolina to try and find a missing elderly woman who has memory problems and has wandered away from home. A few hundred feet from her house, they find a single speck of purple, her jacket, standing out from the outskirts of a cornfield. She looks to be a few rows in and standing motionless, probably wondering how she got here and what to do next. She seems to be pretty out of it, because instead of waving for help, she simply pulls her hood up when she sees the drone like it frightens her. Two officers are able to locate her on the ground after the drone sighting. I'm glad she was found. It's scary to think what could have happened if she wasn't wearing a bright color like purple. She could have easily been passed over and left to fend for herself. Randy Doss claims to live in a haunted house and offers this video evidence for proof. I dare you to slam that door. <laughs> they start recording this video after the door opens all by itself, at which point they try to get the spirit to do something else. And with that said, the ghost seemingly takes up the challenge. Watch the crack in the door and you'll see there's absolutely nobody on the other side. No. Just for the record, it's only Nick and I here. Just when the door almost slams shut, this happens. Oh my god, no! Oh my god! Whoa! The obvious answer is that there is a child standing on the other side of the door, but look again. There appears to be nothing more than an empty sleeve, and more importantly, it doesn't make contact with the door at all. This makes me think that whatever forced the door open could have also wrestled the nearby jacket too. This Iraqi child is unique from her peers in many different ways because her skin and hair have no pigmentation at all, but most importantly, her eyes are pure red. The reason she squints into the camera is because her red eyes absorb all of the light instead of reflecting it. Her parents see this rare eye color as a blessing, but some see it as a curse. After all, red eyes are a nearly universal sign of possession in many cultures, though I doubt this is the case here. Some superstitious folks will no doubt be wary of her before they have a chance to better understand. Her red eyes will stay this way for the rest of her life and hopefully cause her no social stigma.
A group of British friends are playing catch in a courtyard when one of them sees something strange and points it out to the others. The camera follows his gaze and stops on a pale face looking at them from high above. The sickly person looks at them for a second longer before silently slipping out of view. The group is now creeped out and wants to know who has been spying on them this whole time. They tell the property manager about the face they saw in the window, but she says that it's impossible. The room they are talking about has been locked and unoccupied for quite some time. The manager goes up with them to unlock the door and show them around. They try and find the person, but the place is completely empty. There's no way anyone could have been up there, yet the camera obviously says differently. The mysterious peeper has never been identified. A YouTuber named Tracy Slaughter and her family hear a disturbance at the top of the steps, and they grab the camera to record what they are seeing for proof. It starts out very hard to see at first, but soon a pale white outline slowly appears against the wall. The head becomes visible in the very center of the room where the two wall patterns meet. I didn't say lights. Oh my Did God. you say lights? Did, did, did you say go across? I like go across the top of the landing. If you still don't see it, don't feel bad. The next part is much more obvious. Keep looking at the center of the stairway to see it. So he's just gone across the top of the landing, and that's moving. Can you ever see it? A being of pure white energy rushes down the steps and heads straight at them. If you play it in slow motion, you can see something actually comes around the corner and charges down the steps at them, sending everyone scattering. I guess this could be special effects, but I would like to get your opinion. The way everyone screams at the exact same time with true panic in their voices makes me think it could be real, in which case I'm glad they got out of there fast. If it was rushing forward to possess one of them, then I truly hope it does not succeed. Steve and Jake are wandering around the woods one summer night with a single goal in mind. They want to explore an abandoned local chapel that's rumored to be haunted. As they approach, they see that someone has written prayers and warnings all over the outside wall. The two friends instantly get a bad feeling about this adventure, but they swallow their fear and decide to press on. The rickety main door is locked, so they sneak around back. Already, they don't want to be here much longer. They had explored an old clock tower earlier in the day and were greatly disappointed by a lack of paranormal activity. But they could tell this church is way different. The place looked and felt quite haunted. They go up some wooden steps and enter through the back door. They shine their flashlights deep into the church's main assembly. There's rows and rows of wooden pews ahead of them. They pass by a podium and notice a piano. Then they head deeper inside. Now they find themselves inside of a small maintenance closet. They close the door behind them because they don't want anyone sneaking up on them. It feels like anyone could be watching them right now. They see a ladder to the left. Steve is about to climb it, until Jake jokes that a body is going to fall down on him if he does, so he decides not to. That's when the piano starts to play from outside. Oh man. Oh my god. Turn the light. Turn the light. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. It's a soft and haunting piano melody that fills the church. Steve and Jake shut off their flashlights and keep recording. They debate whether or not they should go outside or stay here, where it's semi-safe. They realize that they can't spend the entire night trapped in the broom closet of a haunted church, so they turn their flashlights back on to see who is playing. Sitting at the piano at the far end of the room is a black, hunched-over phantom. They scream and shut the door. Jake cries for a bit, then they run away through the back exit. The music stops as soon as they leave the church. They were hoping that the music stopped because it was over, but in reality, it was because the ghost had gotten up from the piano to chase them. They run a good distance before pausing to look back into the dark scenery. It seems like they've gotten away, but then the ghost finds them and they run away screaming. The camera cuts off as they fall back deeper into the woods. At least one of them survived and uploaded this video onto YouTube, where it's remained for the past 10 years. Whoever shot this footage claims to have been filming back in 2008. They were exploring an abandoned house and decided to start filming after after hearing a strange noise. It's a very short clip since it wasn't long before they were running out of the house screaming. Reviewing the footage again, you can clearly see that this is not an ordinary forest creature. Its front legs bend inwards as it runs, kind of like a human running on all fours. It doesn't appear to have much of a face, yet it can somehow make a terrifying scream. The humanoid appears to be ready for the cameraman as soon as he opens the door. It approaches aggressively, but also with a hint of caution, for it rushes at the cameraman at only half speed. It also doesn't seem to pursue him when he starts running, which means it's probably just claiming its territory and wants to be left alone. The YouTuber who uploaded this video 
says that this is not their only encounter with the creature. Another time, they were exploring the abandoned house with a friend and a knife. They peer into the house from the front yard and listen for any signs of the creature inside. They don't hear anything, so they decide to go further in to investigate. That's when they hear its disturbing warning cries. It sounds like a mix between a squealing pig and some sort of enraged dinosaur. The two quickly turn off their flashlights and remain quiet in the dark. Then they slowly get up and start sneaking away, but just when they think they are safe. What the heck is that? Oh, shoot, go! Shoot, shoot! Just get out of the house! Get out of the house! Just get back to the house! Just get back to the house! Jesus Christ. They run back full speed to their nearby home. When they review the footage, they vow to go back to the property the next day with guns, but they never got the courage to follow through. Since the monster never chased them in either video, perhaps it was just as uncertain of them as they were of it. A man in Daytona goes roof hopping to get away from police. He's almost grabbed at 1 minute and 49 seconds, so he turns around and goes to slide off the roof, only to find more officers waiting for him below. Surrounded, desperate, and unable to see anything ahead of him, he hesitates but makes a last-ditch effort and buys him a few more minutes of freedom. He lays on his back while they search for him. Whenever they get close, he simply crawls to the other side and waits some more. Soon, the drone gives away his position over the radio, and they know exactly where to look. At 3 minutes and 10 seconds, you can see them climb up to call him out and talk him down. On the left side of the screen is a police dog, so at this point, there's nothing left for him to do other than give up. He appears to be trying to look for a way out of this at 3 minutes and 24 seconds, but he is unsuccessful. He waits for them to get a ladder instead and then climbs down to accept his fate. The local lake is overflowing and freezing at the same time. Now a giant mass of jagged ice is pushing past the shore. At first, the freak weather is somewhat fun to play in, but as the lake continues to spill over, they realize their houses will soon be in the way of the carnage. The moving mass of ice shards crackles loudly as it continues to expand, first past their yard and then up to their front door. Within less than a minute, the situation changes from amusing to desperate. It's hitting the houses. It's crawling up the walls of the houses. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god, their door's in! By now, the ice is piled up beyond control, and an entire lake's worth of frozen water threatens to push the houses from their very foundation. Within just six minutes, the entire landscape has switched from greenery to solid frost. I'm guessing they had to stop recording and evacuate shortly thereafter. <laughs> Little male, you out here? Spectators gaze overhead at a bizarre white light piercing the sky. Adults and children alike gather in the street with their cell phones out. None of them can figure out what is going on, much less put the situation into words. The whole ordeal almost looks like a helicopter searchlight, except that it makes no noise and does not move at all. A NASA experiment or even a portal to an alternate dimension are two more possibilities, however unlikely they may be. Whatever this is, it happened somewhere over California in October of 2018 and has never been properly explained. A YouTuber named Lawrence Ryan takes off his shirt and throws it over a shelf. A while later, he returns to the area and now finds the discarded piece of laundry has somehow shifted into a face. This shift continues before his very eyes until Lawrence grabs a camera to document the paranormal event. The shirt takes the appearance of a grinning demonic face who is looking down into the left. If you don't see it yet, you soon will. The transformation is not yet fully complete. The camera goes out of focus very briefly as Lawrence struggles to zoom in while walking closer. And when the camera corrects itself and comes back into play, the face is changed again. Pause at 1 minute and 47 seconds into the video, and you will see it now has a very deep, ceased brow, a sharp, angular nose, and a strange expression that looks like a cross between a frown and a smirk. I really don't see how any of this is possible, but then again, if it's fake, then I don't know how they did it either. The shirt is hanging from a shelf and should not hold any form at all. If they tried to somehow fold it into the shape of a face, I don't think it would stay like that for long. 
This video, published by Chop to Liva in April of 2015, will demonstrate why it's not wise to mess with farmers. Chop to Liva wrote, Always be sure to ask for permission before flying over someone's property. Found out the hard way what happens. He went on to say that the drone was in police evidence and they were going to court over the incident. This isn't the first time nor the last that drones have been entangled in controversy over something like this. Do you think the farmer was in the right to take the drone down? Or do you think he went too far? I think the biggest takeaway from all this is that the easiest thing to do when flying a drone over someone's property is to ask them first. After all, you don't want your drone's fate to be this. Desert workers in Portugal were in for a giant surprise after a huge humanoid decided to wander around the remote job site. The workers were casually filming the desert landscape and having a private conversation when they noticed a hulking creature stomping its way across the prairie in the distance. Caralho, pô, onde que tá agora, pô? Olha lá, olha lá. This towering humanoid looks three times the size of a regular person. The length of its forearms alone is probably the size of a grown man's leg, and despite being heavily hunched over, it looks to be well over seven feet tall. It's almost as tall as the tree it disappears behind. The stunned Portuguese workers were filming for a bit, and when the creature doesn't re-emerge, they wisely choose not to pursue and the video ends. They definitely made the right decision by leaving it alone. One look at its massive arms and long legs and you'd have no doubt that this monster could have easily defended itself against them. This two minute video shows a random lunatic losing his mind in a room full of nothing but trash. The way he makes noises to himself and slaps at the wall is enough to give anyone anxiety. The room is so disgusting that I think only someone with real problems would be down here. When he stops thrashing around long enough to talk, his voice sounds childlike and distant. It sounds like he's crawling on his hands and knees saying it's too long during this part, whatever that means. <laughs> when somebody quits their job, they are supposed to give them a two week notice. This contractor gets very angry at his job site and gives a two second notice instead in the form of total carnage. He shows little regard for the safety of a co-worker who is trying to talk some sense into him as he repeatedly slams the heavy equipment into the same spot over and over again, bringing down chunks of ceiling each time. Fortunately, he seems more concerned with wrecking the property rather than taking lives, although he is lucky he didn't bring the entire place down on everyone. This footage comes from somewhere in the Middle East. A group of teenagers are curiously exploring an old school. They go up a flight of steps and pause when they hear a dog whining on the other side of the door. They all run down the steps and gather at the bottom. They're afraid of being attacked by a group of stray dogs now, but they decide to press on and explore the lower areas. The group finds bravery in their numbers and begins to joke and laugh again as they make their way down a long hallway. They open a door and find graffiti on the wall. Other people had been here before them. Maybe this place isn't so bad after all. The teens grow a little more nervous as they continue to poke around. They are laughing less and starting to go silent. Something just isn't right about this section of the building. A YouTuber named Zobin Jaguar translated their comments. He says at this point one of the teens say that their phone shut itself off even though it was fully charged only a moment ago. Another person was able to keep recording, though they probably now wish they hadn't. They enter one classroom in particular and get a dreadful feeling. Suddenly a figure actually appears out of thin air and walks towards them. The ghost is missing his head, but there's somehow no blood. A loud chanting begins as soon as the ghost walks towards them. But this may be prayers from a nearby mosque. Amazingly, the group all appears to have missed the ghost, which explains why they calmly continue to keep exploring. They wouldn't see the apparition until much later. But when they did, they would never forget what was heading straight towards them in that room. Otherwise known as the Hybrid Man, this intimidating giant grew up in a rural peasant village not too long ago. Though skeptics believe that this man simply suffered from a genetic disease, all we have to rely on for sure is the legend of his birth as told by his mother. Here's what she says happened to her. 
One day, a huge and savage humanoid snatched her from her village and took her to his lair against her will. The wild man spoke no language and appeared to have no part in civilization. Instead, choosing to live deep in the wild on its own, he forced himself on her many times for days on end, and soon she became pregnant with his son. She eventually escaped back to her village and nine months later gave birth. So the story goes that the boy's mother had claimed she was kidnapped by a year in, which is a Chinese version of Bigfoot. Her giant humanoid offspring never seemed to adjust well in human society. Our complex social mannerisms were too foreign for him to grasp. He could likewise not speak any Chinese, but he did grow to understand a few basic commands, other than a few instances of brief interactions with people. His gestures were purely animalistic in nature. He ate like a wild animal and squatted on his haunches instead of sitting like a man. He died at the age of 33 and was quickly forgotten by the community. The footage was discovered much later, and the hybrid man's story soon grew into the internet legend that we know it as today. When researchers went to the village to learn more, however, there was little information to be found. Though theories abound, his true origin remains a mystery to this day. This restaurant is said to have a spirit who refuses to resign from their position even in the afterlife. Late at night, a phantom white image is caught hovering above tables, presumably to take orders and refill drinks. At the 42 second mark, it looks like it turns and extends an arm to put down a check or wipe off a table before abruptly flying away. When a drone drifted over a residential area in Overland Park, two boys on bikes spotted it overhead, and that's when they jumped off their bikes to have a go at it. You can see one of the kids pick something up, I'm assuming a rock, but the drone is much too high up to actually knock it down. The kids follow it for a while, but don't come close enough to truly taking it down, although they make a valiant effort to do so. Eventually, they give up, but the drone doesn't. It continues to follow them for a good eight minutes, with the boys getting fed up enough every now and then to stop and throw more rocks. Certainly a scary and bizarre encounter for both parties involved. This New Orleans restaurant called Tableau's is thought to be haunted by a ghost who will punish you for what it perceives as any bad beverage selections. Here a waiter is preparing the room for a private party and has finished stocking the refreshments when, coincidentally, the bottles all fly off the shelf and land in the exact area he had just finished sweeping. Three separate comments in this video further verify that this restaurant is quite haunted. One person said the window in this very same room unlatched itself. Another said the fire alarm went off on its own. And a third person said they are never going there again because the spirit was staring at them. These comments, combined with this video evidence, is enough to build a strong case for the paranormal in my opinion, but let me know what you think. Kevin Dybin Proc finds himself at the bottom of a ditch. He is not doing well enough to stand up, but he can still hold a camera and record, so he makes a goodbye video to his friends. Oh, and he did try to call for help, but he couldn't get a signal. The sun sets and I think most of us would have passed out or completely panicked by now. But hours later, Kevin is calm and focused enough to think of a pretty good plan. 7 o'clock. Got to use my flashlight to wave somebody down. You can hear traffic pass him the entire time just 50 feet away. But nobody has any reason to look at the bottom of a huge ditch as they keep going. Uh. Yeah, I can use a drink of water. Uh. I am amazed that he is not crying or anything as he calmly says goodbye, totally at peace with the situation. Alright. Love you. Love you, Courtney. Kevin was found by a random person a full 30 hours later, long after this video ended, and his cell phone has lost its charge. He is still alive and okay. This video could very well be proof that the humanoid kingdom extends into the insect world. At first glance, this video appears to be a firefly or some similar sort of bug, but when slowed down frame by frame, you can clearly see that this is not a bug at all, but rather appears to be a tiny winged humanoid. The video shows an insect-like humanoid with clearly discernible arms and legs. Unlike most bugs, this humanoid only has four limbs, and the arms appear to be twice as short as the legs, much like a person. There's simply no insect on Earth like it. It's just too bad the lighting conditions don't provide more detail, because it would have been interesting to see more of its face and overall color patterns. Exactly where this video was shot is not known.
Shortly after moving into their new apartment, this couple began to feel watched, so they installed a camera in the bedroom. A few nights later, they record a full-grown adult standing outside of their window. At first, he is so focused on staring into their bedroom that he doesn't even seem to notice or care about how obvious he stands out against the well-lit parking lot. When the couple inside walks closer to the window and gets on the bed, he tries to be a little more cautious but fails miserably. It's pretty obvious that he is still there and eagerly looking straight at them. He is about as close to the window as he can be, and he is probably really getting into the idea of watching them without being seen himself, not knowing that he himself is on camera. They can see him the entire time, and this is the exact moment that the boyfriend goes out and confronts the man, who quickly stands up and shows no aggression as he walks away. It turns out to actually be their neighbor next door. He came over and apologized the next day, but something tells me that this is a compulsion that he cannot help, and soon enough he will be back at it again, if not with them, then with someone else. Two girls are alone in their house when one of them sees something in the doorway. Pause the video and you can see it's clearly the upper half of a young girl who is dressed in old-fashioned clothes from another time period. She is floating in mid-air as she curiously peeks in on the two children to see what they are doing. One of the girls still doesn't see the ghost. She shouts at something that's on television and accidentally startles the ghost away. The girl with the camera follows the ghost as it retreats. The ghost instantly teleports and now stares at them from the top of the steps. The scared girls run out of the house screaming. They stop only for a second to turn around from the street. They can see the ghost girl walking across the left window on the top floor. It vanishes and then suddenly appears on the bottom floor in less than a second. They scream even louder and take off again. Multiple cameras capture a UFO hovering over Jerusalem in 2011. The small moving ball of light glides over the building tops for a while, and then does a dazzling aerial maneuver that no human aircraft could ever possibly replicate. <laughs> I would think this is CGI, but the same event was reportedly witnessed by numerous people who don't know each other. In this second video, you can see the ball of light is over the same domed building as the before, and abruptly flies straight up. I will admit that the UFO in the first video looks a little different than the UFO in the second video, but I think the first video was recorded with a digital camera, and the second was recorded with a cell phone from almost a decade ago, so that would explain the visual discrepancies. A YouTuber named Elton Minea Severo is recording a webcam video. When a phone call interrupts him, it looks like he might sense that something is nearby when he is talking, but he is too distracted by the conversation to give it much more than a moment's thought. As soon as he hangs up the phone, a white moon-shaped face peeks in from around the corner. It surveys the room for a bit before ducking down and leaping out of sight when Elton turns around, at which point you can momentarily see some kind of weird body with short arms and legs. There is a chance that all of this could be edited, but before you immediately think this is fake, keep in mind that it was recorded in 2006, so pretty much all webcam videos looked grainy like this. If anything, this was a pretty high quality video for its time, especially considering YouTube was less than two years old when it was uploaded, so who knows what it could have been. There's a famous pub in Sydney, Australia called the Carlisle Castle Hotel. For years, this local watering hole has been haunted by the ghost of Old Pete, a bitter ex-employee who left the earth quite some time ago, but not his job. His ghostly antics have been caught on camera no less than three times. The first time Pete was caught on tape, he was helping a customer. The unsuspecting man opens the door to the cooler when Pete decides to grab two bottles of red wine for himself. His ghost grip must have not been too tight though because both bottles go crashing to the floor. Looking at the footage, there's no way that the shelf gave out or anything like that. The bottles were thrown to the ground with deliberate force with no one nearby. Another incident occurred when the bar was full of witnesses. Everyone is happily enjoying themselves when a hanging red wine glass suddenly dislodges itself and smashes into the counter. Glass shards fly everywhere and the entire bar takes notice. Although this could have simply been a freak accident, what are the chances that, of all the red wine glasses, the one that's directly underneath the server happens to be the one to fall and break? The timing is almost too perfect to be a coincidence. Old Pete strikes again.
The third and final tape reveals a glimpse of old Pete himself. The bar is empty this time when the angry ghost suddenly materializes in front of the security camera. If you look closely, you can make out old Pete's head at the bottom of the screen. He appears to be waving. Many other bartenders and customers all claim to have seen old Pete for themselves in one way or another. It isn't uncommon for tapes to turn on by themselves, and the bartenders have seen what they can only describe as strange things while counting down their registers after close. To make this all even stranger, all of the bottles that go crashing to the floor are always high-end red wines. This just so happened to be old Pete's favorite drink, at least when he was still with the living. This video is brought to my attention on the Chills Narrator subreddit by a user named Ryan Cool Vids. The baby monitor of a family in Michigan catches a transparent figure briskly walking by the crib of their sleeping daughter. Moments later, the toddler's head pokes out to see if one of their parents is in the room, but they are nowhere near. Weirdest and most frightening of all is how you can see the figure literally vanishes seconds after it walks by the crib. It crosses the room and then it disappears before it gets to the doorway, almost like an emotionally charged event destined to repair itself without end. This cemetery footage was taken over 10 years ago, and the owner was looking over it at random when he noticed a humanoid object in the background for the first time. As the camera pans over the tombstone, you can see something rushing out from the background. As soon as the cameraman noticed this, he enhances the footage and slows it down to make sure his eyes weren't deceiving him. To his amazement, the adjustment only made things even more clear. This is what he saw. This strange sighting has since caused a huge debate online as to whether or not this humanoid was a grey alien or a ghoul. Many people point out that aliens aren't really seen in the cemetery, but ghouls on the other hand. Who knows what other kinds of humanoids have been accidentally caught on tape, waiting to be discovered. Number 8. The Thing this old VHS tape of a girl dancing is definitely paranormal, at least if you believe what the uploader Sharon Bailey has to say. First an orb floats up towards the child between the 13 and 14 second mark. Shortly afterwards, a strange mist fills the air. Maybe it's something else, but I'm not sure because it seems to specifically wrap itself around the child. The last part is what has Sharon convinced that this is paranormal. She says that there were no other children in the house, but 31 seconds into the video, another little girl runs by at full speed. Her footsteps don't make a single sound. Take a listen. The camera was picking up little coughs and other background noise, so it definitely should have recorded running footsteps. Also, neither the dancing girl nor the dog seem to notice anyone is running straight towards them. Sophie Dosi is a talented contortionist, with a twisted sense of humor, so to speak. Here, she does a crab walk backwards at top speeds, with her head barely hanging above the floor. This is a really creative, ingenious way to scare people that I've never seen done before, but I can't help but think it's a little dangerous too. I mean, if she steps on her hair while walking like this, her neck could snap all the way back. Maybe I'm just exaggerating, but I think I see it almost happen multiple times as she races down the aisle, which adds a whole new level of fear to the overall situation. This home security video shows two bright orbs hovering over some bikes in Carolina Beecher's front yard. She watches in silent amazement as the lights remain fixed in place, close to where you would grab the handlebars. The only explanation I have besides spirits is perhaps a dual reflection of the car's brake lights. That still doesn't explain how they float all around though, while the car lights remain stationary. At times the lights even seem to join together and become one. Strange lights in the sky are being reported all over Northeast Colorado. Unexplained events caught on video like this one by Jennifer Rollins, who all of a sudden noticed only one star in the whole entire sky, one that was directly above her and way too close, and she got out her camera to record it. That is a drone. That is so creepy. The mysterious light does look out of place when you think about it. There are no other stars in the sky, and Jennifer is not moving the camera at all. The strange light moves back and forth by itself, but is it a surveillance drone or something not of this world? And it's hard to see with this camera, but there are red and white flashing lights on it. 
This different recording taken by a woman named Don George does indeed show a sky full of mysterious flashing red lights. I have no idea what these could be and neither does the federal government. They are investigating and have come up with no answers thus far. So either this is a top secret program or it's something else that we were never meant to see. This YouTuber is recording the wall of his school when an all white face peeks out from around the corner. When he goes to investigate, the supposed spirit is completely gone. The spirit itself looks very blurry and is probably CGI. Although I could very well be wrong, maybe someone with more knowledge on special effects could give me more info. This exotic bat with an overdeveloped face first found in Kenya could be the carrier of many bad things animal wildlife officials fear. Its large head does not look like any bat ever seen before and its eyes look very big as well. You don't get to see its teeth out but I can only assume they are as massive as the rest of its cranium. To make matters worse, most of these strange bats start to appear throughout the area. No one knows where they came from or what has caused them to have such mutated features. If this new species does carry some sort of strange disease, I really hope they are able to quarantine it and keep it from spreading to other parts of the world. This video was supposedly taken by a robotic camera while surveying an old oil tanker. A school of fish briefly swims in front of the camera, and suddenly one of the fish gets nailed by a spear in front of the camera. Something fast swims by to collect the fish shortly after. Many people believe that this video demonstrates the possibility of some kind of advanced sea creature who uses tools to hunt. After all, there's no reason for a person to be this far underwater hunting with a spear, and whatever moves in front of the camera is too fast to be a person. Of course, the obvious answer is CGI, but I would love to get your thoughts. A YouTuber named Dylan HD decides to explore an abandoned house with some friends. The home still has some furnishings, including a wall full of creepy paintings of children. The far end of the house is completely dark, and they are hesitant to explore this section. Finally, one of them bravely goes into the darkened corner and comes back shaken. He announces someone is looking at them through the window. Pay attention to the thin beam of light behind him during this clip, because that's the window he's referring to. There's someone who's at the window. Act. Someone was at the window. Was. It's gone really bright. Is the window on No, it's, it's the same. Oh! The thin beam of light silently extinguishes as the window is closed by whoever was on the other side. It's important to note that all three friends were close together when this happened. One could be seen on tape, the second was holding the camera, and the third could be heard directly to their right. The trio runs screaming out of the house and never looks back. In this clip, caught at the Credit Bank BCP, a cameraman is talking with a pair of colleagues, one male, the other female. He's standing behind them as they talk, but if you look instead at the background, you'll notice a dark figure over the man's shoulder, race past. The cameraman says, I have just seen a girl crossing there, the crying girl. He is talking about the Latin American weeping woman ghost, as this was shot in Lima, Peru. The man in the shot thinks the cameraman is joking, but when the cameraman goes to check, he turns up nothing, no girl, an empty room. I swear I have seen the ghost of a girl crossing here. I will show you the video, the man says. Did she simply disappear? A corresponding surveillance video of the bank's automatic doors revealed that they opened around the exact same time, but no little girl, no one at all exited. Will some believe this video to be a fake? Others think that perhaps it truly was the weeping woman. It's late at night and YouTuber Molly the Leg is the only car on the road when he sees something that doesn't make sense. Follow the curvature of the road and look in the distance to see it.
was that? What? What? I, I saw somebody on a bicycle or something like that. Up ahead, Molly the Leg sees a bright light cross the road and then suddenly disappear. What's also strange is how the street lights start flickering when this happens. He has no idea what the moving light was. It couldn't have been a car because there was nowhere for vehicles to go but straight. Molly the Leg even used Google Maps to verify this. So I'm at a complete loss. Jonathan Savo published this video in January 2015. After visiting his girlfriend in a Paris hospital, he wrote that a woman in the next bed was roaring and screeching with the voice of a devil, and that's what the video captures. <sighs> The woman is seen lying flat in a bed, speaking in a raspy, evil voice. She is harassing the couple, calling them tacky and ugly, and telling them they're all going to die. Although you can only see her profile in the video, and you can't see her mouth moving, what you can see is her chest rising and falling as she delivers her angry tirade of insults and threats. She then says she's going to call her mafia friend, after which she claims she's going to remove her IV drip so they can get out of the hospital. That's where the clip ends, leaving us wondering if the woman did in fact try to escape, but John doesn't leave us hanging. In his own words, he wrote, I was no longer filming when she or it started to get up and wanted to take the life of a person sitting next to her. Five nurses came in to stop her, and we were asked to leave the room quickly. What happened next? John doesn't know. Prior to this experience, John says he was skeptical about demonic possessions and everything related to them. But after seeing one in the flesh, he's a believer. Valence footage was taken from. The Helmut Carr College in South Africa. A strange mist appears in the far doorway and slowly morphs into the shape of a girl wearing a long dress. She casually walks into a nearby classroom, as if this was just another ordinary school day. Except, of course, the room is empty and no one is in the building. Even though this is called Helmut Carr College, it's actually just a high school, and this phantom-like figure does appear to be around the same size as an average student. This makes me think it could possibly be real, though I guess they could have just edited this girl into the video if they really wanted to. Named Craig Wilson was doing some home repairs when he noticed a small hole in his backyard. He opened it up a little more and was shocked at what he found waiting down below. This hole goes down, down, down. To a giant cavern. It's a gigantic earthen cavern extending a full 16 feet straight down. Craig wonders out loud if this was natural or man-made. As he continues to videotape from a dizzying height, Craig quickly had the hole filled the next day, but he'll never forget about the huge underground threat that was once threatening his home. He and his wife think that it was probably a well about 60 or 70 years ago, but they aren't positive. I'm just relieved that the hole didn't widen while well, he was standing over the edge. Blurry Faces is a YouTuber exploring two mysterious schools standing next to each other. They were both built around World War II and have been abandoned for a long time. Everything starts out normal until Blurry Faces is exploring an upstairs room full of classroom furniture. After that, something seems to be stalking them at every turn. The strange banging noises only grow louder and more persistent as time wears on. I will give them credit for being courageous and sticking around for so long. This is the event that finally makes them lose their composure and scramble. This time, Blurry Faces bravely tests the weight of the door himself and finds that it's way too heavy to swing open with such ease. You can tell he is putting a lot more effort into opening and closing the door than whatever just opened it moments earlier. Tell me what's written in Spanish across the door and if it has any significance to what could be possibly lurking inside. A YouTuber named Sean Wells 2001 
is convinced that something unholy is lurking in his attic late at night. It always starts with a weird static sound, almost like an industrial fan, even though nothing is plugged in. Sean leaves the camera on overnight to see what happens. The mechanical humming sound doesn't go away, and then at 3 a.m., new disturbances are heard. And if you are wondering why Sean doesn't go up there and see what it is for himself, here's why. There's no way a raccoon or any other creature would have enough strength or intelligence to lift up the attic door like that. So Sean's video is either 100% paranormal or just a prank. Let me know which one you think it is, because I really can't tell for sure. Dairo Firma TV published this video in 2007. The video shows a red swing set at a park on a windy day. At the beginning of the video, the middle swing is flying back and forth rapidly, as though someone is swinging vigorously on it. Only there's no one near the swing set. A man then walks in and stops the swing and, for a moment, it is still. Along with the swings on either side, they sway a little with the wind, but nothing like what the middle swing had been doing moments before. Then, suddenly, the middle swing starts swinging back and forth again. It even starts to twist around a bit. People are gathered around the swing set, watching the phenomenon. What is causing the swing to move? It is clearly windy, but why are the other swings just swaying slightly? Well, this one is going berserk. Is a ghost child currently inhabiting that swing? Who knows? Well, most 4 argue that the video is indeed real. Without the use of special effects, it is apparently caused by the Renaissance phenomenon, which makes this cause more scientific than paranormal. David Whitehurst is piloting his drone over the neighborhood when all of a sudden a much smaller white object nearly collides with him at a far greater rate of speed. David doesn't know what this fast-moving object is, and honestly, neither do I. Give me your best guess and let's solve this perplexing video together. YouTuber Trevor Heasley published this clip in August of 2016. The footage was on the set of Postcards, a 2008 Pasadena City College student film. He'd taken it during the film shoot at the Metropolitan State Mental Hospital. Although the cast and crew heard a lot of ruckus during filming, they didn't see anything unusual. That is, until Trevor got his camera home and watched the footage back. The abandoned state mental hospital appears quite eerie in the footage, darkened windows on a hot summer day. The footage involves lots of close-ups and long shots of the area, including some gags with the cast. Everyone seems to be having a good time on the shoot, but will what happened next haunt them? During the shoot of one scene, the vapor-thin figure of a ghost appears to be walking across the hallway right before two of the cast. apparently completely unaware of what just crossed their path, come running through. Okay, so it probably won't haunt them, being as they weren't even aware of what was happening before their own very eyes. That is, unless the spirit somehow inhabited one of them. I think we need a follow-up with the cast and crew of Postcards, and maybe then we can solve this scary mystery. Two school custodians are standing in the middle of a creepy old boiler room. One of them is the supervisor, and he was called in after his co-worker said that she saw objects moving around on their own. He records the situation for legal workplace reasons, and the two of them reluctantly investigate. Alright, hang on, hang on, just wait. I don't want to go back there. Let me just take a look. Now, you say what happened now? The door shit by itself. Itself, Dave. All right. 
The supervisor doesn't see anything out of the ordinary, and he reassures his co-worker that everything is okay. He encourages her to go deeper into the boiler room and get something that she needs, and that's when things go wrong. Is there anybody back here? Go ahead. No. What the f Oh my god. A metallic chair scrapes towards them on its own and they both fall back. I guess the supervisor could have pulled on a string, but I think the chair moves a farther distance than he would have been able to pull judging from where he was standing. A YouTuber named Michael Delaney is flying his drone when he comes across a wild animal in the brush. He follows its path and soon finds himself hovering above a den of rattlesnakes. Michael is casually observing their natural habitat when suddenly one of them feels threatened enough to react. The drone is fine. But the snake managed to dislodge the camera. Now the situation gets a whole lot more real. As Michael realizes he will have to somehow reach into an underground pit of snakes. If he wants to see his GoPro again, thinking fast, he wisely chooses to go in with a hockey stick instead of his bare hands. He balances the GoPro on the end of the stick and pulls it to safety. Keep in mind that he's standing in tall grass and could have easily been bit by a stray rattler. Let me know if you think you're brave enough to do the same thing, or if you would have just left your camera with the reptiles. Pasty Pickle is the name of a YouTuber who has been having a strange house problem. Time and time again, he goes outside only to see a figure in the window. Despite there being no one in the room, there seems to be no rhyme or reason as to why this happens. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. He shows that no one is hiding in the room, and then goes outside to see if he can capture the elusive figure on camera. Holy sh**, there's actually a figure today. I actually got it on tape, no way. The sun kind of gets in the way, but look closely at the top window and you'll see a very faint outline in the center. It almost looks gray and formless. You can see it a lot better here. Wow. Holy. <laughs> okay, alright. Give me your best guess as to what you think this could be paranormal or otherwise, when a YouTuber named Aqua Chigger stumbles across a fallen tree, something compels him to take a look inside. He immediately spots an unusual fragment in the freshly upturned earth. Weird. What do you think? This prompts him to look inside of the hole. He doesn't see anything else at first, but then... Ooh, what's that? Yeah, stuff might just have gotten real, guys. It's a piece of green fabric that Aqua Chigger hopes is just a tent. When he finds buttons, however, he knows that this is somebody's blouse. He finds some more remains and turns them over and over again, trying to determine if they are human or not. He knows that they are right by the highway, and even says that police found a different body in a creek not too far from here. He eventually finds the jaw of a deer and some other scattered animal remains, so he decides not to call the police. Even if this was just animal remains, it still doesn't explain the fabric he found, nor does it explain how a couple of other bones look like they possibly could have belonged to a human. Let me know what you think this was, and if you think he came across something that should have been reported. A paranormal investigator who goes by Bakersfield Paranormal Services sadly lost his mother and is filled with grief. Even though he is very distraught, he wants to communicate with her. He goes to the cemetery with his equipment and approaches his mother's marker. At first, he asks some basic questions and has her respond by playing with the lights. Are you always around me and my, my wife and my kids? Thank you. Emotions there, Mom. Do you love my wife? Okay, I got it. I, I got it. 
After a while, he pulls out what he calls a ghost box, which supposedly allows his mother to communicate using various radio frequencies. He believes other spirits are crowding around the box and keeping his mom from communicating. Mom, can you please speak to me? You're trying to? He thinks she says, I'm trying to, but I think it kind of sounds like she might be saying, I love you. Listen to it again and let me know what you hear during this part. This video looks like it came straight out of a scary movie, but it is claimed to be real life footage of a patient at a mental hospital in Sadovich, Siberia, according to William M. who wrote about the true story of what happened in Sadovich, Siberia. The story of Sadovich Asylum is incredibly disturbing. The location is remote and all that remains are records and legends about what happened there, some of which served as inspiration for the 2012 film Entity. Without further ado, let's analyze this video. The footage shows a skeletal man in a white dressing gown, sitting and rocking slightly on a hospital bed. The room is dark and sparse and the bed is narrow and doesn't look comfortable at all, which is perhaps why this patient is up all night, rocking back and forth. You can see the patient curled up in the fetal position on the bed, then huddled over, then standing. He then starts pushing the bed by the railing. After that, he appears as though he's removed his hospital gown, and he is seen leaning off screen, perhaps against the wall, trying to get out. He makes his way around the room, then he is seen lying on the floor by his bed. You can hear a horrifying guttural scream in the video. It's one of the most tortured howls you will ever hear. Along with whatever is unfolding in this video, other paranormal events are said to have occurred at Sadovich and these events were becoming more and more common. More than one patient reported of evil things happening within that institution until the authorities were forced to close the facility down, and it's good that they did. This video gave me some serious chills. Marcus Webb has been feeling a presence in his house and decides to start recording. A white specter passing by is what he claims to find. I'm not sure if this is a dusty cobweb or something truly paranormal. All I know is that Marcus felt like he was not alone and the camera verified that something moved nearby, which is definitely a creepy coincidence. A YouTuber named Charles M is checking out an old house for sale in Las Vegas that was supposedly owned by the Mafia. At one point during the tour, he comes across a fake wall in the kitchen and follows an old set of stairs down to a secret basement. The basement extends for a long time further and further underground, eventually opening up into a long white room that's completely bare, except for cabinets lining the far wall. Connected to this room are two other smaller rooms about the size of a closet. They each give him a bad feeling. The two smaller rooms are dark and soundproof, Strangest of all, the doors only have knobs on the outside. I don't know why the mob would have needed a soundproof room that nobody could escape from and I don't want to know. That's all he finds, hidden inside the ventilation shaft of one of the rooms, is what appears to be a single spent bullet casing. A man at work accidentally locks himself in a large attic. He's trying to open the door when he hears a strange noise and decides to start recording. He thinks out loud that it could be a rat or a pipe as he cautiously continues to film. I'm getting kind of a spooky vibe up here. Right there. There it is again. Soon he realizes that the strange thump is coming from the very top of some steps that he has never seen before. He climbs the steps and suddenly feels like he is no longer alone. Hello? Apparently, he was right. Whoa! 
Something clatters to the ground and sends him running down the steps. I'm not sure how he managed to get out, but when he did, I'm sure he was glad he had plenty of video evidence to back up his claims. No Squid Sid published this scary video in October 2015. Writing, while I'm away, a strange man is caught on my surveillance camera, snooping around my house. I accidentally left my webcam on after making a video, and I then left the house with it on. The video shows a normal living room, with a sliding glass door revealing a backyard with a fence. A van pulls up beyond the fence. The uploader said he assumed it was a visitor of one of his neighbors. The guy gets out of the vehicle and looks directly at the house. The guy is then out of view for a moment. The uploader thought he went up the street, but soon enough he is seen peering into the room. The man is bald, wearing jeans and a hooded sweatshirt, and he stands right up next to the sliding glass door peering inside. He's holding a piece of paper in his hand. He knocks on the window of the patio door, pulls up his pants and waits. After a moment, he appears to be leaving, but you don't see him get back into his vehicle for about a minute. The uploader suggests that maybe he went around to the front door to knock because he could hear his dog barking in the video. When he does finally get back into his vehicle, he gets out again, leaving the car door open. He seems to be carrying something rather large, but you can't really make out what it is. Suddenly, there's a loud noise captured in the video. What was the noise? You see the man get back into the vehicle and he finally drives off. And the questions remain. What was he doing there? Why was this stranger knocking and lurking around the uploader's house? Why did he knock on the back door first? And most importantly, what was that noise? The uploader says that when he returned to his house, he found a crack in his door. So that must have been the noise near the end of the video. Was he trying to break in? Who knows? but the uploader hasn't seen the strange lurker since. This footage was supposedly taken from a submarine lurking somewhere in the Greenland Sea. The crew is so fascinated with a school of fish overhead that they fail to see a much rarer creature directly behind them. A large webbed hand that is roughly five times larger than any human's slaps the glass before pushing away. It's almost as if the humanoid creature was toying with the submarine crew and wanted to make its presence known. However, one thing bothers me about this video. If everyone is so interested in the school of fish passing above them, then why is the cameraman focusing on his crewmate's reaction instead of the fish? This video could very well be scripted and CGI, although it also wouldn't surprise me if it really was legitimate. Only the submarine crew knows for sure. Cora MK2 is a serious motorcycle enthusiast with a YouTube channel detailing his many road adventures. One night he is biking across a normal looking bridge in Pasadena, California. When he sees something particularly unsettling, be sure to watch the right side or you'll miss it. You might have missed it anyway, so here it is again. This girl right here, um, she's, she's just standing there. She's not walking, she's just standing there, and you can't really... It's important to note that the replay was not edited. After I knew where to look, I was able to go back to the original footage and see her easily. Cora MK2 says that the girl was smiling, though the camera isn't able to pick up the details of her face. Apparently, so many people have taken their lives on this bridge that it's gotten to a point where they had to install fences as a deterrent. Perhaps this girl was either contemplating taking her life or was the spirit of someone who already has. What's scarier than a child ghost? A child ghost at a hospital, that's why. When hospital staff saw the ghost of a child at their hospital ten times over only a few hours, they were left shivering in their scrubs. Cordoba Children's Hospital in Argentina, it is claimed. The hospital staff weren't even going to let the ghost leave peacefully. Instead, they were determined to interact with it. 
Some say they place balloons in the location where it's routinely seen, and those balloons always burst on their own, and one nurse was even more determined to capture the young child on camera. She claims to have succeeded in capturing him or her playing hide-and-go-seek. In the video, the specter is crouching behind a bed, which had been left out overnight in the hallway. The cot had a sheet tucked over top of it. A nurse caught the ghost on camera as she saw the child ghost peer from behind the sheet. While some skeptics don't believe the hype, other visitors and hospital employees say they've seen this child ghost too. Moreover, not all viewers agree that there's anything in this video, while others say there's certainly a creepy shadow to the right of the cot. The ghost's nickname is the Ghost of 500, and legend has it that this child ghost is the soul of a patient who passed away in room 500. The corridor where it was caught on camera is no longer in use, and it links to the children's wards. This group of friends decides to go into an old middle school that's rumored to be haunted. The building has only recently been abandoned, and it's still in relatively good condition, so there's not much to say until they come to one section of the school that's much darker and filled with mold. The group still feels safe in their large numbers down here, and they bravely trudge through a series of musty hallways. They don't see anything out of the ordinary, but when they put the video on YouTube later, Somebody points out a possible shadow figure in the distance during this part in particular. I personally think that it could just be stacked debris, but then again, I can somewhat make out the faint outline of a shadow that's roughly the size of a child. The more I look at it, the more I can notice its legs and head in particular. Let me know if you agree, or if you think I'm looking into the situation too deeply. A YouTuber named Ariane Childress is a ghost hunter, using some sort of paranormal software that I'm not familiar with. It almost looks like split-screen night vision, with some sort of enhancement feature on the right. Anyway, Ariane uses the program to capture what appears to be an oversized face, lingering in her window. And seriously, I'm like looking at this window. There's nothing out there. <laughs> it looks like there's a face. That's really creepy. She says that she's been feeling watched in real life when she turned the app on and pointed it towards the window. Meanwhile, the colors continue to switch from pitch black to a gray discolored face. Not normal. Be sure to let me know what this app is, and how it works if you have any knowledge. While most hospitals have some stories to tell, I'm guessing a World War II hospital has even more grisly ones on the docket. In this video, published by Subi in November of 2017, he and his friends explore an abandoned World War II hospital in Milton Keynes. For some reason, they chose the dead of night for their exploration, so straight off the mark, the hospital looks scary simply because it's cloaked in darkness. The only guiding light is the beam from Subi's flashlight. The crew enters in through a broken window. The pair have apparently been in the hospital before because one of them says he's not going down a certain direction because that's where they hear things all the time. At one point, they stop to listen because they both say they've heard something. It isn't clear what they've heard, but they continue on regardless. It sounds as if there's loads of glass on the ground as they walk through the building, cracking and breaking the shards beneath their boots. One room, Subi claims is a gas chamber, and there are many pipes and stalls throughout. He then decides it must have been a shower block. While the hospital doesn't turn up anything truly mine, a motorcyclist named Motor Tourist is biking through India when he misses his turn and gets lost. Now it's threatening to rain and his bike's narrow high beams are his only source of light. Motor to wrist is already close to losing his composure when he sees something that pushes him completely over the edge. Some stranger rushes at him from the side of the road. Keep in mind that it's 10 at night and there's apparently no villages around for miles. The pedestrian would have to be out of their mind to travel down a dark road in bad weather without so much as a flashlight to guide their way. Moto Tourist is positive that he's seen a ghost and quickly speeds off, though it might have been someone in distress. 
We'll never know what the situation was for sure, but I'd like to get your opinion nonetheless. This one's a little difficult to see, but when you do, the payoff is worth it. A YouTuber named Past is exploring an abandoned property in Nottingham. Pay attention to the very last window during this clip. Even then, I doubt you'll see it. Now here it is again, with the paranormal sighting highlighted. Something very large appears to move quickly in the very last window. However, this window leads outside and is two floors from the ground. With this in mind, what could this moving object be? This security camera footage, uploaded by DJ Ashba in August of 2015, shows an outdoor courtyard on a sunny day. The uploader claims he left that afternoon and locked his doors and no one was in his house. He returned to find one of them open, so he checked his security cameras to see how this happened. And this is what he found. You can see a flash of light in the video, and then the door swings open, but no one comes out, or no one that we can see anyway. The uploader writes, I named the ghost in my house Charlie. Since this, I have experienced several unexplainable creepy occurrences. Hopefully, for the sake of these homeowners, Charlie finds a different haunting ground. On December 17th, 2008, Four 17-year-old boys were found passed away in their car at an abandoned farm 10 miles from their hometown. This clip's description reads, Published in 2009 by Indran Cole 3, No Through Road is allegedly the last remaining footage of the boys alive. The found footage involves four boys from Stevenage, Hertfordshire. According to the clip, the residence near where these boys were found was thought to be abandoned, but when police investigated, it appeared to have recent inhabitants. According to the video, the footage was released with the parents' consent in order to garner any leads in the investigation. The footage shows your average British teens out driving around at around 4 in the morning. They get lost on the dark back roads, and their GPS has stopped working. One of the boys gets out of the car, but then he looks terrified and races back to the passenger seat screaming, Drive! He claims there is someone wearing a mask. After driving off again, the boys get in a fight about where they're going. They seem to find their way, and then they suddenly get lost again, and are nearing a tunnel with signage that says, Private Road, No Through Way. They stall in the road, wondering what to do. Suddenly, there's a man standing in the middle of the road in their headlights. He starts walking towards them, and the boys don't live to tell their tale. But this footage does. Of course, most of the replies on posts of this video on the export mention that this is a short film, but that doesn't make it any less scary. What would you think if you saw a wheelchair moving down an eerie, empty, poorly lit hospital corridor at night? You might think you've walked straight into a horror movie. That's probably what security for this hospital thought when they reviewed the security footage after some ghost was up to no good. In the footage, a wheelchair is parked near a wall at the end of the hallway, but slowly it starts to turn and begins to roll backwards around the corner. No one is pushing it and no one is sitting in it, so who or what is maneuvering the chair? And where are they going? Only the spirits lingering in this hospital know. This video taken at the North Dallas High School in Texas by a YouTuber named Smart Dolphin captures a very hard to find figure at the end. I've highlighted the possible ghost so that you can see it more easily. This is without a doubt the colorless outline of a human. You can see his feet shift a little bit as he changes his stance if you look closely enough. With this in mind, the question becomes whether or not this person was living when this video was recorded. I guess it wouldn't be too hard to make somebody look all gray like this with some decent editing equipment, but let me know if you think this is a genuine ghost or just a fake. 
Drew2727 is watching a boxing match with some friends. When he catches an unwanted visitor outside, pay attention to the sliding glass window as he pans around. An impossibly large creature with a long twisted neck appears to be regarding the group from the backyard. I will say that something does feel a little staged about this video because no one is talking or even looking at the camera as it passes by. But I guess it could have just been a quiet group of friends. Chris Moon is a paranormal expert who travels around the country demonstrating the metaphysical properties of the spirit world. This time he is using a spirit box at the Cornell College in Iowa when suddenly a student's jewelry does something I've never seen before. Relax, everybody, don't crowd her, please. If we get it, we're filming, it's okay. Her necklace starts going berserk as the spirit apparently tries to get her attention. She then hears a familiar voice come across the spirit box and immediately bursts into tears. The voice talking to her, she believes, was an old volleyball coach who passed away. Glyce wanted me to tell you hi. <laughs> <laughs> he misses you so much. Chris Moon says awe and points to the box when he hears it. This video certainly captured some convincing evidence of the spirit world that Chris is trying to prove exists. YouTubers The Proper People published this exploration of an abandoned psychiatric hospital in April of this year, 2018. The psych hospital was built in the 1800s for poor folks who couldn't afford health care and has been abandoned for more than two decades. The place certainly looks old. Whole pieces of wallpaper are chipping from the walls. Below the hospital are tunnels connecting to the surrounding buildings. The crew didn't enter the tunnels because unlike the psychiatric hospital, those buildings are still in use, but they did come upon a fallout shelter. Many of the rooms they come across are empty. Some are locked, making the crew and their viewers curious about what's inside. But perhaps the most curious rooms are those with piles of the Sykes Hospital supplies and equipment. Chairs, tables, walkers, buckets, mattresses, all thrown together in one place. They even encounter an old green tub with an adjacent seat used to lift disabled patients in for bathing. And further on, they arrive at half of an elevator car. For some reason, there's something so unsettling about an open elevator shaft and an elevator not where it's supposed to be, Michael says. It gives you a bad feeling. Well, Michael, this whole place gives us a bad feeling, so I'm going to stay as far away from that hospital as possible. Now, this ladder is walking down the driveway. No one's touching it. No one's around it. And it's actually walking down the driveway. That's the reaction of Tony Dode as he videotapes a walking ladder on its own. The ladder clatters down the driveway as if someone is guiding it in short steps, but nobody is near. If you have any possible explanations for this, or have seen this before with your own eyes, then please share your experience. If no one has a proper explanation, then this is one of the most perplexing videos I think I've analyzed on this channel to date. This huge wall of security monitors shows that everything in this building is silent, and still except for a single sign going haywire. I've seen signs twisting around from the air conditioning before, but this looks a little different. The back and forth swaying seems very deliberate, almost as if an invisible force is hanging off of it. I don't have much more information about this video, aside from it taking place somewhere in Singapore. Let me know what you think of it. Britton Smith is hanging around her door room when she notices something is apparently laying in bed with her. An invisible force appears to be pressing up and down on the flowery design of her covers right before her very eyes. I will admit that it's hard to tell if something is on top of the covers or simply underneath. 
in which case it could be anything and not necessarily paranormal. Britton Smith describes this as a ghost in her dorm room, but I'd like to know if you agree with her or not. This alien-like creature perplexed everyone when the footage was released to the public sometime in 2008. Shell Company says they caught it on video hanging around one of their oil platforms about 200 miles from Houston, Texas. It was eventually identified as a long-legged sea creature called the Magna Pinna Squid. But even to this day, many videos still insist that this is evidence of alien life. As such, I just wanted to include this squid on the list to put the rumor to rest. A home with a history of passings is sometimes best kept empty. At least, that's what the Hernandez family discovered when they saw something hidden in their security footage. Prior to moving into this home, they were told by a man who knew about the property that their house had a history. According to Brianna Hernandez, he said that several years ago, his uncle had a house on this corner lot and his uncle passed away. The house remained unoccupied for a time before it was leveled and new duplexes were built over top of it. While her husband was concerned about ghosts, Brianna was a cynic, that is, until she saw the surveillance footage. The Hernandez family was having dinner on a Tuesday night when her husband looked over at the security camera footage, just as a strange image appeared on screen. As soon as I saw it, my hair stood up. I've never seen anything like that before, Brianna said. While she didn't see the image at the time of its appearance, her husband quickly asked if a person had appeared, and they all went to check it out. The image did indeed appear to be a person, but not one of this world. The entire family, even the cynic Brianna, believe it is a ghost. The image she says is bright, and the arms and legs of the figure are moving as it passes through. What do you think? Is this glider a ghost? If not, what could it be? Britton Smith is hanging around her door room when she notices something is apparently laying in bed with her. An invisible force appears to be pressing up and down on the flowery design of her covers, right before her very eyes. I will admit that it's hard to tell if something is on top of the covers or simply underneath, in which case it could be anything and not necessarily paranormal. Britton Smith describes this as a ghost in her dorm room, but I'd like to know if you agree with her or not. YouTuber This Is Dan Bell explored a creepy apocalyptic looking hospital in May of 2016. The hospital in question must have been a Christian hospital as there is a cross on the front of the building. From the outside looking in, the place does live up to its title. The windows are darkened and it's clearly empty and in disrepair. Upon entering, Dan finds a storage room filled with broken chairs. The room alongside it is covered in garbage and remnants of the past. Closer inspection of the garbage that lines the floor shows that this place was a dumping ground for needles or perhaps it is still used as one. Hypodermic needles completely cover one section of the floor, an enormous stockpile of them. As they explore the place further, they run into that singular image of a single wheelchair in a dark hallway that we've seen so much on this list, and in another hallway a single stretcher. This time though, neither moves. Perhaps this hospital isn't haunted like the others, which is strange because it looks like a ghost prime haunting grounds. The exploration does turn up other interesting things as well, but it's mainly a series of long, dark, scary hallways and rooms strewn with filth, much like what you'd expect an apocalyptic hospital to look like. This urban CCTV footage was taken at a pedestrian crosswalk in Mexico City. A young girl with black hair over her face materializes in front of a car and makes no attempt to move out of the way. Somehow, the automobile is able to pass through her without causing any damage. Damage. This eerie incident was captured on multiple CCTV cameras, though I suppose this could be faked with some skillful editing. A Halloween football game at Silmar High, California picked up what could be the ghost of an old football player going for one last tackle. Anna says a month later when she looked at the video, she saw a mysterious ghost-like figure running across the field. 
The mother did not remember to even look at this video until a full month later. Let me know if you think she has made a valid discovery or if this is some kind of camera malfunction. A YouTuber named Mr. Technical Difficult and his friends are hanging out by a river. When they see an old abandoned cooler on the other side, they don't pay much attention to it at first. But after a while, they grow curious as to what could possibly be inside. Finally, they can't take the suspense anymore and decide to retrieve the floating container. What they find inside is troubling. Open the hatch! <laughs> they remove an excessive amount of masking tape and pop the lid only to see a black-eyed doll peering back at them. The creepy doll is dressed in red suspenders and its head is turned directly towards the camera. No one knows what to make of this unsettling discovery and they all stand around for a bit laughing nervously. To this day, the group has absolutely no explanation as to how or why this doll was sealed and sent down the river, or more importantly, who is responsible for this strange message. A YouTube channel called Interesting Creepy and Abandoned is checking out a local haunted house to see what they can find. They are making jokes as they search the first floor, but the atmosphere suddenly changes as they make their way up an old flight of stairs. It's just really silent in here. I'm just getting a very weird vibe up here. I don't know. One room has a very weak floor and a ladder leading up to the attic. The strange feeling grows stronger as they make their way up, and that's when they find it. <gasps> what? What is it, dude? Oh my god. A doll has been strung up by the neck and left to hang in the attic all alone. This is already creepy enough, but then the doll starts spinning in a slow circle before their very eyes when it was stationary just a moment ago. The two of them can't figure out why the doll is moving on its own, so they decide to get out of the house before any other unexplainable events can happen. This tiny alien looking body was recovered in the South American desert of Atacama in 2003. Rumors quickly spread that the tiny inch being, which had gigantic pointy eye sockets and two missing ribs, had to be from another galaxy. DNA testing quickly revealed a different story. The small human was a member of the local population who had a rare genetic variation of dwarfism that has never been documented before. This discovery would have never been possible if not for this video to generate public interest. Hina Tahir and her sister are camping in New Jersey's Double Trouble State Park when they notice a strange woman who is half submerged in a local lake. Her clothes are all white and she has a serious expression on her face as she sways in place. To this very day, the two girls aren't sure if what they recorded was a live person or a ghost. If it was a person, then I have absolutely no idea why they would be in the water while fully clothed. And if it was a ghost, then maybe her body is lurking in the shadow waters below. Whatever the case may be, Hina and her sister decide to leave the woman in peace and dare not go any closer. Julia Merfeld gets into a stranger's car and they introduce themselves. So, I guess you got a little business to discuss? <laughs> she is interviewing a hitman for hire. They discuss payment, a good date and time, and the target, Jacob, her husband. The conversation becomes increasingly creepy as they get into the finer details of the job. You don't want him to suffer, so I'll make no, it quick and not. clean. Perfect. I, mean, I can do it any way you want me to, <laughs> but I just want to know how you want it done. Really, whatever's easiest. If you can get him outside, that would be great. Because okay. it, would, it would be messy in yeah, well. <laughs> They later have a second meeting finalizing the plan. After showing the hitman a picture of the target, Julia starts talking about why she is having this done. As terrible as it sounds, it was easier than divorcing him. You know, I didn't have to worry about the judgment of my family. I didn't have to worry about breaking his heart. Uh, stuff like this. It's like kind of like a, a, clean, a clean ghetto. I mean, it's going to be fun. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take him head on there and I'm going to shoot him right in the face. Okay. Okay. Little does Julia know that she is actually talking to an undercover officer. And these two videos contain all the evidence they need to put her away. The judge gave Julia a sentence of between 5 and 20 years. 
Let me know if you agree with this decision or if you would have given a harsher sentence. A remorseless psycho has been roaming the streets, striking people senseless with a hammer in Las Vegas, Nevada. This time he's come across a particularly vulnerable homeless target who is fast asleep in the cold street. The lunatic looks over his shoulder. It's the middle of the night, no one else is around. He quietly removes his blunt instrument of destruction from a plastic bag and takes two swings. Little does he know his hammer has connected with the head of a mannequin set up by the LVMPD. This is not a homeless person, but rather a decoy that police are using to catch the man who has been terrorizing the streets. It was an undercover operation that they weren't sure would work, but to their astonishment, they catch him after only a few nights. The man, later identified as Shane Schindler, had this to say upon his arrest. Okay, have you hit anybody with a hammer? No. His attitude quickly changes after being confronted with the video evidence. Shane was sentenced to serve between 8 and 20 years for striking the decoy with a hammer. I don't think police could pin him to the other incidents in the area, or else he would have gotten more time. Either way, at no point did he seem particularly upset by his actions or their consequences. In the winter of 2012, this YouTuber was almost a goner when a mother black bear decided to charge at him, not once but twice. Speed Shooter XT was hunting in this Oregon forest when he encountered some bears nearby and began filming. The bear starts off by keeping her distance but ultimately begins charging in his direction. The most scary part of this entire video is the look on the mama bear's face when she begins approaching played in slow motion. The man managed to scare the bear away by being loud, and shortly after, she charges towards him again before the video ends. Luckily, this YouTuber got away safely, considering black bears can run up to 40 miles per hour. So if the bear did chase him, he wouldn't have standed a chance. Theo freaking door is walking around outside with a friend when he stops and looks around, suddenly feeling paranoid and alarmed for no reason at all. Dude, that was straight up like, hold on. It just, I got a huge uneasy feeling like I was being watched by something. He keeps sensing that something is wrong and sure enough, he stumbles upon a large square patch of freshly dug earth directly in front of him. Yeah, I want to get a good view of it. Dude, somebody was digging a grave out here. <laughs> oh god. Theo and his friends stay around for long enough to document the event and then they quickly take off. According to them, this is a massive hole that is too large to be for a dog or any ordinary house pet. Maybe I am just jumping to conclusions, but that hole looks like it's just the right size for a body. Let me know if you agree or not. Athlete Chad is finishing up a camping trip with his family in Rexburg, Idaho. When he notices a large bear approaching his motorhome without fear, soon it rears up on its hind legs to get a better look at what's inside the camper. Oh yeah. Whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, no, he's God. finding the thing down! Hey, hey, no. He's taking the it. No, he's no, he'll rip it off. The YouTuber and his family manage to get away unharmed but the teeth marks on their side view mirror will always remind them they came face to face with a wild animal in the woods. This video seems like just an image of a gator at the start, with its jaw wide open, staring blankly, completely motionless. But it's not a photo. That becomes clear when the camera zooms in closer to the gator's eye, and it starts backing up angrily, its jaw even wider. Then it goes berserk in the tunnel, clamoring towards the camera. Until the camera pulls away, the gator then approaches slowly, biting on a cord. After backing away again, the camera approaches the wide mouth, sharp tooth creature once more. The eyes, the scales, the teeth, there's nothing about this that isn't chilling to the core. But what is a camera doing up close and personal down in a sewer anyway? Mike Kruger in the comments section of this video seems pretty knowledgeable on the subject. He wrote that the camera was doing a condition assessment of the storm sewer. 
he noted that behind the alligator, you can see the swamp. The tired gator simply clambered into the pipe to have a sewer nap, that is, until his nap was so rudely interrupted. Downright Dives is a three-man team of dumpster divers who go through the trash looking for discarded valuables. They comb through a series of dumpsters without incident, mostly coming across old rotten food. They're searching through the last couple of dumpsters when one of them makes a startling discovery. No, 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 no. Move in there, guys. Guys, guys, guys. Move in there. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. Neither of his two friends believe that there could have been somebody lying at the bottom of the dumpster. They just have to take a closer look for themselves. That box right there just moved. I'm not even joking. That one. That one. Oh, no. Go, 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 go. The camera doesn't get a clean shot, but you can hear a man pop up from underneath the boxes and screams that he owns everything inside of the dumpster. According to the description, it was a homeless man who continued to come after them and even got into a physical altercation off camera. I'm on the fence with this one since we never get a chance to see the homeless person in question. Also, living in a dumpster is a stereotype about homeless people that is rarely true, so this encounter is very unlikely. Let me know if you agree. This rare footage of a sewer monster is brief, but frightening. The video seems to capture a glimpse of something large with a tail launching around the underground. The black and white adds to the creepiness of the footage when suddenly something the size of a kangaroo moves swiftly past and out of sight. Although not quite as unsettling in movement as a creepy critter might be, whatever this strange being is, it looks completely out of place in the sewage system. Any idea what this strange creature could be? Come here, Ayla. What's scary? Emma is too afraid to come into her parents' room because she says she can see a bad man in there with them. When her mother asks to point where the person is, she indicates that it's in a dark closet which is open. The mother examines the closet. She doesn't see anything but she seems to get an uneasy feeling that matches her daughter's emotions. What, baby? You want daddy? Yeah. Okay, go get daddy. The child turns around and freezes. She is too afraid to move without her mother following closely behind her. There's something about this video that seems very dark and genuine. Obviously, the mother felt a presence too, or she would have not uploaded this video with the title of Two-Year-Old Girl Sees Ghost Again. Overall, more information is needed before I make a final judgment, but let me know if you think Emma was seeing something that her parents could not on that night. This is supposedly the last footage of two guys who were driving through a forest in 2006, uploaded by Lars Helg Nedrebo. He writes, This is some of the footage found on their camcorder. From what they are saying on the video, they were trying to take a shortcut through the forest. The footage is dark and not so clear, but it shows two friends driving along a road, laughing, singing, and generally having a good time. At one point, they are in a forested area when they come across a roadblock. One of the friends gets out to move it. The road beyond is a bit spookier. It's bordered by trees and darkness. They come across another roadblock, and the driver stops so his friend can pop out again to move it, but he can't for some reason. It's locked, perhaps. He gets back in the car, and we can assume they turned around to get back onto the main road. Then, for some reason, they get out of the safety of their car and head into the forest. Bad idea. While they're walking, they hear something not of this world. The sound is disturbing and seems to scare the men who are searching for its source with a dim flashlight, but they start laughing, as it sounds strange, like an animal choking or something. Soon, however, they're not laughing. Whatever creature was making that noise suddenly attacks one of them.
while the other races towards the car. You can hear him sobbing as he attempts to get back inside to safety, but he doesn't make it. The creature attacks him as well, and the camera catches him as he falls to the ground and is dragged off. We can assume neither of the pair made it out alive, as the title Last Footage would suggest. What was this creature? Do you think this footage is fake or real? It's been debated on the internet for quite a while now, whether real or not. It's quite scary. Ethan Menard and his friend are out exploring when they find a long tunnel that gives off a creepy vibe when they are commenting on how dark the tunnel is and just trying to keep calm in general when suddenly a small child's voice chimes in somewhere behind them. It's like pitch black in here. The timing of this creepy small voice is quite a curious and morbid coincidence. It simply says hello at just the right moment during a pause in their conversation. It's like pitch black in here. Whether this was real or edited is up for you to decide, but I think there is a strong chance that something paranormal was down there. Brennan Taylor published this video in July of 2017 writing, we explored the forest to the depths of where normal hikers are not allowed to go. The things we saw changed us and we will never be the same. We decided it would be a good idea to play the kakuri san which is basically the Japanese equivalent to the Ouija board. First, the man filming asks the board if they're going to run into a body that night, and the board answers, four. Being that there were four members in the group, this response must have sent a chill up each of their spines. When asking the spirit if they should be in the forest, the spirit answers no. At one point, one of the crew notes that moths are a sign of the afterlife and they are all over the place, even landing on the board. They also notice scratch marks on a nearby tree, which seem to indicate that somebody clawed at it in the shape of an X. They next ask the spirit if they'll find someone that very night. The answer, yes. When they finally decide to leave the forest, they've lost the coin that is used as a planchette. According to the Kakuri Sun, one of them must spend the coin within 24 hours of playing, or otherwise there's bad consequences. They backtrack to look for the coin, but the coin is never found. What will happen? Will they have 70 years of bad luck? It's hard to know for sure. All we do know is that they survived to tell the tale and post it on YouTube. This rare footage of a possible ghost ship made waves over the internet back in 2010. Everyone thought it was a paranormal sighting at sea, but it actually turned out to be a rare mirage caused by changes in air temperature. Apparently, when the water cools off, the air temperature just right, it sometimes can make ships look like they are floating. This is called the Fata Morganaz effect. I'd really appreciate it if someone in the comment section could leave a more detailed scientific explanation to help us better understand this strange phenomenon. A YouTuber named Darth Nixa claims to have found this disregarded video somewhere in Croatia back in 2005. In it, two friends are hanging out in the park late at night when they notice someone is apparently following them closely without making a sound. The two of them think it's weird, but they don't seem to be very intimidated, especially considering they outnumber the stranger two to one. Even when the unknown man gets closer and does a creepy walk towards them, they laugh it off as some sort of joke and calmly walk away. Soon it becomes obvious that this person is not going to go away on his own, and they turn around to confront him. The two friends still aren't taking the situation seriously until it becomes too late. Hey, you're still red, Rock. The way the video cuts off makes me think that this could just be a student art project that Darth Nixa could have either found somewhere or even made himself. Let me know what they are saying if you speak Croatian 
And if you think this video is real, maybe there is a longer version floating around where we can actually see what happens next. A group of Bigfoot hunters are searching for clues deep in the woods when they come across something ominous glowing in the clear night sky. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. See? Oh. Three. And in a different position. Three orbs appear to form a mysterious triangular pattern off in the distance. Every once in a while, the light on top gets extremely bright and then fades away. They can't figure out what these lights are, and I'm not quite sure either. Tell me if you think this was an alien sighting, or maybe even some sort of experimental aircraft. All I know is that if these bizarre lights really are a regular occurrence around these woods, then maybe the idea of Bigfoot isn't so far-fetched after all. Leviathan published this video on February 18th, 2016, writing, In March 2015, I went on a hiking trip in the woods of Monrova, Czech Republic. He said after a few hours of walking, he suddenly heard some strange sounds coming from south of him. While walking through a mossy wooded area, he hears a sound echo throughout the forest. The camera shot moves towards the sound, and the fearless hiker decides to enter deeper into the forest to investigate. He comes across some tracks that look Bigfoot-esque, in the shape of human feet, only bigger. Deciding he'd rather live than come face to face with this creature, he gets the heck out of Dodge. But as he's leaving, the strange call is heard in the forest again. It's almost like the wind is screaming, but the day is absolutely calm. On the way back to his car, he claims that he heard the noise the whole way. While well, guesses as to what this creature might be range from Bigfoot to werewolves, one thing's for certain, stay out of the forest. Mick Jugger Nuggets is a famous YouTuber who comes home one day only to find evidence of a serious break-in. Some of his possessions are missing, things that he is sure were in his room earlier before. Somebody took the hard drive. Or drive the what? All my behind the scenes. Somebody literally came into the house and must have taken this shit. I'm going to check the security camera. He argues with his father for a bit about the likelihood of someone breaking in, but the security video does not lie. Hold on, here it comes. Sure enough, some stranger cases the house by knocking on the door a few times, even going so far as trying the knob. Soon he uses a long tool to pry open a window and reaches inside to quickly scoop up a nearby hard drive before taking off. Oh my god, dude. Much to Mick Jugger Nugget's amazement, the window was right next to his bed. He soon comes to the sickening realization that this person, who was perhaps a stalker, literally reached into his room to retrieve a hard drive full of unedited video content. Who knows what this deranged fan will come back for next time. Decertify Urbex is a British YouTube channel that explores abandoned places that may or may not be haunted. This time, he ventures into an old abandoned crypt that has fallen into disrepair. He easily gains access through the wide open door and immediately finds pieces of caskets that have been smashed open and apparently looted long ago. Profane is the only word he can use to describe how the situation felt, as if he had no right to be here, disturbing this sacred place yet again. At one point, he picks up and handles what could be a bone, though it could also just be a great piece of rubble. It's hard to tell for sure. Later on, he finds a large plot of land that has also been dug up by grave robbers. He even sees the large rock they used to smash open the casket before grabbing whatever they were after inside. They were probably just looking to take jewelry and other valuables, but who knows, maybe they wanted to take something even more personal and a whole lot worse. A YouTuber named Eleven Makeda and their friends are camping in the backyard when they completely lose control of their bonfire. 
First, they try to put out the blaze with a simple garden hose. When that doesn't work, they try to smother the fire with dirt using shovels. Meanwhile, the flames grow taller and hotter as the fire spreads outwards, threatening to reach a house that's only a short distance away. Also, if it reaches the cornfield behind them, then the fire could quickly cover acres of land. The short five-minute video ends before we get a chance to see what happens next. Hopefully, they did the right thing and called for firefighters to put an end to the backyard inferno. Otherwise, if they were too afraid of getting in trouble and continued to try and contain it themselves, then it might very have cost somebody their home. Carter is making a YouTube video to show off his expensive new roof, but he accidentally catches something lurking inside his home during the process. That's right, new roof. Shingles were delivered today. Old roof was torn off yesterday. New roof will be put on tomorrow. Six thousand. A giant oversized face is staring directly at Carter. Through his own window on the left hand side, you can see its eyes, mouth and nose have been shaded perfectly to form a ghoulish expression. I've watched this video many times and I still can't tell if this is truly the face of a ghastly creature or just a reflection of trees outside. If it is a reflection of a tree, then I find it weird how the leaves or branches don't seem to be moving at all. It really does look like an unblinking face staring straight ahead. Carter does not seem to notice and continues filming for quite some time. This video of urban exploration published by Backyard Exploration in January 2015 is particularly eerie because what's scarier than dark, damp tunnels and nowhere to turn? In the video description, Backyard Exploration writes, as the city grew, much of the underworld was sealed and forgotten. We infiltrate the sewers in search for this lost history. Unlike many entries on this list, these guys mean business. They are decked out with gear, headlamps, ropes, and safety equipment for sewer exploration, and they will need it. The underground is a dangerous place, and if you're claustrophobic, the tight spaces might give you screaming anxiety. Even worse, if you're squeamish, you might want to sit this one out, as there's loads of wadding through raw sewage. The exploration shows the bricked underbelly of the sewage system, along with the sewer rats that scurry across the ground and up the walls. Water trickles down from above as the team continues to trapeze through the dark tunnels. The team crawls and climbs through narrow channels to make sure no stone is left unturned, and at one point, they even walk waist deep in sewage water, which is sometimes calm, sometimes rushing. In some areas, there are massive amounts of cockroaches skittering across the ceiling of the tunnel. All in all, it's pretty much every phobia imaginable in one. As After Dark said in the comments, this is the stuff that nightmares are made of, this tunnel. But fortunately, this nightmare does come to an end. As the video concludes, they exit the sewage tunnel to breathe fresher air and see daylight again. On January 15th, 2013, YouTuber Mr. Hutch117 posted this strange sound heard in the forest. I don't want to be out in the nighttime. Where did it come from? We're in the middle of nowhere. The man filming asks. The man believed it was coming from up above somehow, though it also seems to come from every direction. He and his hiking partner had just heard a noise that was a bit off-putting. He decided to turn on his phone's video to capture the sound if they heard it again. Halfway through the footage, you can hear why they were concerned. The sound sounds off again, and it seemed like the guttural laughter of a demon. Maybe it wasn't 2012, it was, it was 2013. Then comes on a deep and echoey wailing, something that's not human, not animal, not anything known.
while viewers think it must be fake because the people in the video are reacting much to the frightening sound. Others suggest it could be related to the mysterious trumpet-like noises heard worldwide, and some say it could be the US government project HARP. Mountain lions are known to stalk their victims. Published in September of 2014, YouTuber Sophia Zhang wrote, During Chris's 2014 summer mountain biking adventure, a mountain lion stalked him. And in this video, you can see how he handled the hungry mountain lion in the wilderness near Fernie, BC. In the video, a man is standing in a clearing with some tall brush, trees all around, and a dirt path. He claims there's a mountain lion in the vicinity, but for the first couple minutes, you have to take his word for it because the animal is completely camouflaged. But at the two minute mark, you catch the lion creeping towards the man who is shooting the video. At least it's creeping at first, then it starts walking, and as it closes in, the man scurries backwards for a moment. Then he turns around and the lion is just standing there in the path, looking calmly at him. He starts talking to the lion also calmly. He tells the lion that he's much bigger than him, and the lion doesn't care. He creeps into some bushes, and you can hear him growling, as the guy now shouts, Go! The lion just creeps around the other side until he's in full view again. He stares the guy down, seemingly unintimidated by him, but the guy turns around and tells him to stay back, saying, I'm not afraid of you. The lion then just turns around carelessly and plods away, just another day in the forest. The CCTV video of Hannah Graham was taken on the night of her disappearance. You can see her walking in the background from right to left with a man tagging along behind her. Here is a closer look at Jesse Matthews, the man responsible for taking her life. Police used this video and other similar footage to determine that Jesse approached Hannah and had a conversation. Police dogs detected Hannah's scent on the door of Jesse's car and around a dumpster near Jesse's house. They got a search warrant and found her belongings inside. Police used Jesse's DNA to link him to another woman named Morgan Harrington, whose body was discovered years earlier. Jesse was sentenced to life for these horrifying actions. Papa Jake is returning to a haunted sewer tunnel that he explored once before. But this time it's 3 a.m. He and his friends think that a large sewer creature might be down there, so they bring a lot of extra equipment, like motion sensors and night vision, to capture it on video. Their first encounter happens not in the tunnel itself, but rather in the surrounding woods. Something's in the nest! Something's in the nest! Something is in the nest! What appears to be some type of humanoid creature scampers across the forest floor on all fours. Only one of the two friends see it, so I guess he manages to convince himself that it was nothing, and they continue to press on. A short while later, they finally locate the tunnel. They are very deep inside when a strange and haunting moan convinces them to get out of there fast. What was that? What was that? The noise is coming from the same direction they just came from, so Papa Jake and his friend try to outrun the creature at a fast pace, taking blind turn after blind turn for a full five minutes. It isn't long before they find themselves wandering down an oversized pipe completely lost. Whatever is chasing them, on the other hand, apparently knows every last twist and turn of this labyrinthian cesspit and finds them quickly. At this point, they all stopped recording to run for their lives. Papa Jake now feels he has sufficient evidence of the rake, and I doubt he will ever go back there. As always, be sure to let me know if you think this is real or not based on what you've seen. Their reactions all seem very genuine, but there's always the possibility of special effects. Though there are plenty of strange noises caught on tape, this one is as scary as it is mysterious. Published by Jimmy Dillard in June of 2013, Dillard left his camera in the forest to capture deer. Instead, he captured some strange screaming, grunting, and rocks being thrown at his camera. 
while Dillard thought it might just be children playing around or a homeless man disturbing the forest, we'll never know the truth because the source of the sound and disturbance never appeared on camera. In watching the video, you can hear a bellow echo throughout the wilderness, almost Tarzan-like in nature. Later in the video, you hear tree branches breaking. Then, one of the most chilling noises is that of a growl or a bark. The thing sounds human, but not quite. You can hear whatever it is clamber through the leaves and branches. The whole video is quite unsettling, almost more upsetting, because you can't see the source of the sound. Although, from the sounds of it, the creature must be very near. You expect it to jump out at you at any moment. I've been hiking and camping since I was little, and I've heard just about every animal in Georgia, but I've never heard anything like this, Dillard wrote. One thing to keep in mind is that elk and moose don't inhabit this region, but could it be some other animal? Which leaves us to wonder, what in the world is residing in this forest? This video comes from 2009. A YouTuber named Lullier has been experiencing strange paranormal encounters for as long as he can remember and decides to document them one night as proof. He's crossing through a room when suddenly he sees a blank face peering at him from a doorway. This has apparently happened to him before and he flings open the door. Nothing's inside. Just like all the times before, he shuts the door and the face reappears. Look closely and you'll see a hand reach for him as well. He grabs the camera and looks inside the room a second time. No one is in there and this noise is all that he finds. These friends are too busy gathering around a campfire to notice something is scampering behind them. Well, you've been sharpening it for like two hours. Just out of reach. Watch it again. Well, you've been sharpening it for like two hours. The furless creature moves on all fours in an unnatural way that resembles no forest animal I've ever seen before. If it's not computer-generated imagery, then perhaps this is footage of the rake or some other forest beast. Cryptid Hunter and two of his friends are returning to a cave that they believe to be haunted. This time they are using a paranormal investigative technique that I have never seen before. They bring dolls with them into the cave that they believe are already haunted. They want to see how the spirits in the dolls react to the spirits in the cave. They also use long, thin rods that the spirits can use to respond to questions. Please point the rod to the most haunted doll that's inside this mine. Right, there it goes again. Then, the spirits in the cave apparently decide to skip and the make rods. their presence known in a much more physical way. What the f*** is that? The smooth cave walls probably have little traction, so the doll could have just fallen over on its own. Then again, maybe it was really pushed over by an unseen spirit. Clearly, the doll somehow moved. So, those are the only two explanations I have. Let me know which one you think it was. And I always look up to the sky and I always say, Hi, Dad. That's how a YouTuber named Jennifer Moen5 pays her respects to her dad, who has since passed on. Then one day, it looks like her father says hello back to her and her family. Oh boy. You can see a shimmering orb rise and fall to the ground as soon as she says hi to her father. I wanted to add that this is the only paranormal video on Jennifer's channel, which otherwise focuses on enjoying wholesome moments with family, so I really don't think this is video editing. 
I also wanted to ask that everyone please show the utmost respect when telling me if you believe this is real or fake since it deals with the memory of a loved one. This is 8 year old Libby Chaletsky leaving his school one day in Brooklyn, New York. When he fails to come home that night, his father looks at the CCTV video and starts retracing his son's path. The school's video shows his son walking down the road and making a left. He stops in a nearby locksmith store and talks to the owner, who is a neighborhood friend. The locksmith has no problem showing the worried father his CCTV footage. It shows Libby walking one direction and then doubling back as if he is lost. You can see someone in a white shirt walking with him shortly before he goes off camera. The father tracks down more CCTV videos from other businesses and paints a disturbing picture. He watches his son get into a man's car and they drive off somewhere. He checks the same camera later and sees them return. The stranger gets out of the car and leads his son into a white building. This is a small Brooklyn community, so the father instantly recognizes this place as the local dentist office. He passes all of this information to the authorities and they raid the dentist's office and home. What they find is a grisly and scary scene. The dentist has taken his son apart and is keeping him in the freezer. His name is Levi Aaron. He told officials that he sometimes hears voices in his head, though he never said what they told him to do or why he took Libby's life. Though sheer insanity appears to be his motive, he was nonetheless sentenced to 40 years. When Brian Schultz entered the forest in September of 2015, he probably wasn't expecting to be spooked by something that was perhaps paranormal. In his video description, he writes, Camping trip on September 6, 2015. I was alone and seen strange lights moving from tree to tree of different sizes and colors. I was doing a live periscope at the time, so the video isn't the best quality. In the video, he was reading his live viewers' comments and responding. After the event occurred, he called into Art Bell's show, Midnight in the Desert, and talked on air about what had occurred. You can see a flash of light between the trees, with Brian's flashlight directed towards it. The flash looks like a spark of light. When he turns his flashlight off, the light is broad and bright. Whatever the light is, keeps flashing in the trees, low, high, everywhere. At times it appears like a flashlight, other times Brian suspects it's a UFO. Others in the comments said they've had similar experiences before with no explanation. Many commenters say at 2 minutes 36 seconds in the video, there is something or someone seen moving behind him. But this light keeps flashing up in the trees, different areas. Um, it's really weird and I don't know how to describe it because it keeps flashing in different areas of the trees. If we slow down the footage, you can definitely see something move. Do you have an explanation? Australian Survival School is a YouTube channel documenting what it's like to live in the Big Down Under. In today's lesson, what should be a simple joyride gets stalled by a large and potentially dangerous discovery that's all too common in Australia. Get out my car! The brave man pulls with all of his strength and finally dislodges the massive reptile from its hiding spot. Let me know what kind of snake this is and if it's venomous or not. That way, we'll know how risky this man's maneuver really was. This video is from a camping trip that Emery Buckner and his friends took back in 2010. After introducing each of his friends by name, something catches Emery's eye. He zooms in on a small clearing in the woods that's just up ahead, and that's when he sees it for the first time. Guys, what is that? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's... What's what, really? Seriously, guys. There's something yeah, I, really, I seriously saw something over there. Tom... None of his friends managed to see it, but Emery encourages them to stay still and keep looking. Then, sure enough, the red glowing eyes return. Guys? What? Oh my gosh. What is that? that oh my That's God. it. That's it. I t oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Uh, oh my gosh. What is it? They waste little time retreating to their boat and speed away to safety. But just before they take off, Emery catches the creature a final time. It's now casually observing the group while perched in a tree. 
its head cocked to the side, its faint outline barely visible behind a pair of glowing red eyes. Nook published in June of 2008 by Damien Black, the shadow people of Emerson County are caught on video, causing havoc in the forest. According to Damien in his description, the first reports of these creatures occurred in 1957. In his own words, in August of 1997, roughly two miles from where original reports originated, a video camera was found and turned into local authorities. What they saw on the old tape was scary, mysterious, and remains unexplained to this day. The video shows some grainy footage in the forest. At first, there's just trees and brush, but after a moment, the cameraman says he's heard something moving. Zooming in, you can vaguely see that something, a translucent form of a figure as it moves through the trees. It's difficult to tell if it's a man, animal, or something else, but it does look like a shadow figure. At first, it seems perfectly docile, and then it screams. The pair run, but it's unknown whether they made it out of the forest alive. That terrifying sound may have been the last thing they ever got feeling a sensation is almost worse than the reality itself. Say you're alone in the forest, the hair stands up on the back of your neck, you get the sensation that something is watching you, what do you do? Druid Raven Scout published this video in August of 2015, explaining this very scenario. Well, he packed up his bags to leave the forest. He said he felt something that he couldn't explain, a gut feeling that something or someone was following him. He said he felt threatening sensations as he walked the path over a couple of hours. He had planned on staying in the forest another night, but his intuition was telling him not to. During the 18-minute video, he explains that he feels like he's being observed. He also says he heard something strange up in the trees as he walked the path earlier. He does manage to escape the forest without meeting his stalker, but not without shaking the feeling that something certainly was watching. Aokihara, also known as the Sea of Trees, is an infamous Japanese forest. Well, there are certain areas that are so dense that a feeling of solitude exists there like nowhere else. Sound is also absorbed, allowing for a kind of quiet you've never heard. Yuri, ghosts of the past away from Japanese myths and legends reside in this forest. Needless to say, the place is grim, and it becomes even more grim when you bring a Ouija board and attempt to talk to the spirits. Red Poppy Ranch is the name of a YouTuber who is looking for something creepy that someone claims to have found on his property before. He has personally searched the area on three separate occasions and never managed to find anything, but something compels him to get on his ATV and look again. This time, he sees the landmark that his friend was talking about, an old fence post that was once a corral for holding livestock. He knows that he is close to what he is looking for. Red Poppy Ranch pays attention to the ground while he walks. Then he finds it in a small overgrown patch of land. So now, I'm going to go see if I can figure out what happened. It's the final resting place of a one-year-old boy who was born in the late 1940s. Red Poppy Ranch lives in a small town somewhere in the northwestern United States where everybody knows each other, but when he asks around, nobody recognizes the last name on this marker. Gold, the YouTuber later digs into the city's official records, but he finds no indication of who this boy was or what happened to him. However, he was able to discover that there was an extremely harsh winter in the year of 1949, so perhaps this is what claimed the child's life. We'll never know for sure why this young child was buried in the middle of nowhere. This video was supposedly taken somewhere in Arizona in 1997. It was later found in an abandoned police station according to the description. The large group is walking towards a bright light in the horizon, and it almost looks as if there has recently been a large crash. As they get closer, this alien-looking creature emerges and takes a few steps before noticing their presence. A giant beam of light bursts from its chest, and the group runs off before we can see what happens next. 
I'm not sure if this was a costume or not. I wish we got a closer look at the alien, but from this distance, I'd say there is a possibility that this video could be real. Isaiah Harris published his sewer exploration in March of 2018, describing it as the utter most scariest video that I've ever recorded yet. He went on to say, I think it was mostly because of the position I was in and how much ghostly things I heard and seen. The first clip shows Harris along with two young accomplices exploring the underground sewer during the daytime. They make their way along a tunnel to an area with pooled water, which has frozen over with ice. In a second video of the sewer exploration, Harris, joined this time by his brother and sister-in-law, shows how they entered the sewer by lifting up a big iron storm grate and crawling under. The tunnel is filled with graffiti, and they jump down from this initial tunnel to a broader area. A ladder is also positioned there, suggesting that this area is a regular stomping ground for exploration. They continue on, and Harris explains to his crew that there will soon be a ditch with shin-deep water, and there may be a den beyond, as he found evidence of people living there once before. The ditch area is filled with ice and a layer of snow over top. Harris jumps down, breaking through the ice. The other two decide to turn back because they think they've heard something in the tunnel. But that's when Harris looks deep into the tunnel beyond and decides that he too wants to hightail it out of there. After he claims to have seen something down there, they start to make their way back, but pause when they hear a growling sound. Harris also notes that there's a handprint on the wall as they arrive at the exit ladder. They also hear tapping sounds coming from within the tunnel. They manage to make it out of the tunnel without incident, but one does wonder whether the creature within was human or monster. Even animals that look as slow and non-menacing as moose are. YouTuber Azeroth6390 discovered that in June of 2007 when he published this video writing, My dad and my grandfather were trying to chase a moose into the forest because it was in a village scaring people. What happened next? Well, see for yourself, the moose is wandering in the forest, and you can see a man and his dog head towards it. The shot cuts to three moose running along next to a home, presumably being chased off by someone, while a dog nearby the man filming starts barking. That's when one of the moose has had enough. He clambers through the trees towards the dog, and the man filming... The man lets out a crazy bellow, so the moose thinks better of it. Also, he seems to be having a tough time getting through the thick bramble. The moose retreats, and the man filming says, She tried to get us in his native language. Moose can be very dangerous in terms of behavior. They're not as aggressive as bears, but their population size means you are more likely to be injured by one than you are by any bear. According to How Stuff Works in Alaska alone, moose outnumber bears nearly 3 to 1, wounding around 5 to 10 people in the state annually. That's more than grizzly bear and black bear attacks combined. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to feel the power of the weight behind those antlers. Okay, seriously? This car is haunted. It's off. I just came outside. There's no one in it. Why? Why is that thing just spinning on its own? Chance Raspberry is heading to his car when he notices his rear view mirror accessory is moving in fast circles all by itself. What's especially weird is that the car is completely shut off, so it can't be from the air conditioning, as he has not been inside of the car for a long time, so he didn't bump it while getting out. There should be no way for this ornament to be dangling on its own. To prove his point, Chance films himself taking a long walk to his car without turning off the camera. It's a good 30 seconds or so of walking. His car is visible the entire time and no one gets in or out. Yet when he reaches his car, the object is still moving just as quickly as before, as if no time had passed at all. This is insane. This is insane. The car is off, the windows are up. 
There is no draft. There is no breeze. There is nothing to perpetually keep that thing in motion. I suppose there could be some sort of magnet inside of the accessory, but even still, I don't know what it would be attracted to. Since my best guess hardly makes any sense, I'd definitely like to hear what yours is. It's creeping me out. I lived here for going on seven years. I walked a hundred miles through these woods. I've never seen that shape before right there. That's the reaction of James Jones after finding a strange human silhouette standing motionless in the Tennessee forest. What's especially perplexing is how James should be close enough to see the person's facial features, yet their entire visage is shrouded in darkness. It's not a broken tree or whatever. I don't know, it looks like it's connected right there, but it's not. I've been over there a thousand times. Even if this was a tree, there's not much of a reason for it to be completely dark instead of the same color as every other tree around. It almost looks like the figure is wearing a colonial style hat. Maybe it's the spirit of a soldier from the Revolutionary War. Or maybe they were a soldier in the Civil War. Let me know what you think it was, and if you think James was in any trouble on that day. A YouTuber named Sans the Skeleton 101 thinks he may have seen a monster lurking in his yard. The out of focus object looks like it could be a creature on all fours, but I'm just not sure. It doesn't really seem to be moving, and could just easily be a pile of dirt. Whatever it is, it sends Sans the Skeleton 101 running back into his house in terror. Let me know what you think it was, and if you think he was really in any significant danger at the time. A lifeless person is wrapped in a blue tarp that was recently found in Camptown, Pennsylvania, and a local news reporter is digging for details. She arranges for an interview with someone named Matthew Haverly, a man who happens to live across from the creek where the person was found. He acts completely surprised about the situation and disavows any knowledge of what could have transpired. I had no clue. Sad to say that that's someone's either daughter, mother, whatever, both, child. Hours later, police discover that the person was, in fact, none other than Matthew's mother, which makes this last comment a terrible coincidence. If Matthew was aware beforehand that it was his mother floating in the creek, he gives absolutely no indication at the time. He ends the short interview by saying how the person was probably dumped in the creek out of town by hitmen. It would be like a place where people from the city would want to put a body because most most likely they wouldn't be found. Police investigators don't buy this explanation one bit. They raid his property and in his shed they find the same blue tarp that his mother's body was wrapped in. As of this day, he has been charged with a capital offense but not yet convicted. If he is found guilty, then this means out of sheer coincidence. The reporter had unknowingly scheduled an interview with the very same man who had taken his mother's life not too long ago. She may very well have been standing just a few feet away from a calm and collected psycho without realizing it.